We are just in the process of getting uh, March CPI data here, three and a half percent. That is, let me get rid of this so we can actually see the number here. Yeah, 3.5 percent higher than expected on the year over year rate there. We were expecting 3.4 percent uh, for March inflation. The core number, uh, 3.8 percent versus 3.7 percent there. Uh, 0.4 to the upside is higher than the 0.3 expected on the headline number there for March as well. So across the board, a slight uptick for inflation. A lot of people mentioning this late in the day yesterday and expecting the possibility of uh, higher than expected uh, inflation here. 3.5% against uh, 3.4 expected. Remember the prior 3.2%. So heading in the wrong direction here. 3.8% for core year over year for March. Uh, 0.4 versus uh, 0.3 there overall. Uh, Market not going to like that. Um, Heading to the downside here as far as the overall uh, futures are concerned. Not a huge miss, uh, but we are heading uh, southbound uh, pretty quick here. Fabian, when you can, let's jump over to the guys. Yeah, uh, so that's not what everybody wanted. Hot, no. come on, don't no. come in hot. It was supposed to come out pie. That would have been nice. No, 3.14 and then a bunch oh, of other Oh, that would have been real nice. Well, I, I joked about it in the chat of the after show while you were on there. But no, now we're down 1% in the NASDAQ. And I think, look, the overwhelming expectation was as expected. So to come out hot core, hot um, CPI, month over month also came a little bit hot uh, as well. I never want to react. I'm not going to, I can't even pretend that I wasn't thinking it was going to be flat and maybe that would give us a bit of a bounce. But in this particular situation, I do not want to overreact. If we're headed down, I'm not punching lows. I just don't necessarily feel it. If anything, if you can find, if I can find something I really, really love and I was looking at Google and 155, it's kind of thin out here. But uh, I wonder if we don't hold on to some support, at least for a little bit of a mini bounce here. Uh, the names that I like to the short side, at least those will set up. Like I'm kind of looking for something that we can grab at the Coinbase <laughs> at some point. But uh, that's down underneath 238. Uh, so that one doesn't even feel like it's close enough for a chase. I wanted this bad boy back in 250. So we'll have to be a bit patient this morning as CPI is hot, hot like fire. Yeah. I mean, we got some, I mean, we got numbers. You know, we saw the jobs number. And now we're seeing this. I'm trying to find some levels. I, I thought it was going to come three the other way, 3-3, three, three, not 3-5. I mean, it's unbelievable that it's a couple decimal places makes this much difference. But um, I had an offer on the TQs up here near 62.50, thinking we were going to run up to 18.6 from 18.4. Instead, we went 200 the other way. So just trying to find some base here. Um, if you're going to look at the NASDAQ, I don't think this is too doom and gloom. I mean... We were up 0.3 yesterday. You're down point, uh, 1.2 right now. It's not nice. And we do have some support down here near 18,000 again. So let's see if we can bounce in and around 18, 18 O's. I'm trying to load up the Fed rate tool right now. I don't know if you got it over there, Brendan, or a better source, but it's not, it's not loading at all right now. So we'll have to wait to see um, if and when that starts to update. I'll keep refreshing it. But for right now, yeah, I guess um, can we take those hikes? you know, off and push them down a little bit further now. Um, this number is not the greatest. Tomorrow we have PPI, and then we'll see. But there's a bounce. I mean, we've been down here before, seen these kind of moves. I actually just put a bid on Apple. I thought we would get it at 168.50. I was actually debating 169. I was about to, I'd, I've done a couple notes on this sticky note, but wanted to see what this number was. I was going to talk about Apple 169, and we just came into that level. But 168.50 looks pretty sweet as well. And then NVIDIA, you know, just th this is what we expected today, honestly. The market's been pretty overheated. We've talked about that for, for quite a while. And NVIDIA is now down 100 and... Correction territory. 60, yeah, what is it? At 840. Is, is it down 20%? That's what I was trying to figure out. Well, uh, 970. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so more than that. So you're down about 14, 15 percent on Nvidia from the highs. Uh, ten year just got to four five on the yield on the ten year. Obviously, that's going to spike up. The market spikes down on this. Uh, so four or five up there. And look, at some point, I'm expecting like that Fed fund rate. It's going to change. Like whatever oh, yeah. it was yesterday, because I think we were what June was 50, 50 ish. I mean, it has to change. I, I don't think bit. it was exactly, but I'm I, I can't see any way that that doesn't. Uh, move to the downside. So, you know, rates are going to be up in a situation like this. Uh, I was looking for things that are obvious fades. 
Uh, the thing about NVIDIA is that 850 level is only a $10 bounce away. And maybe we get there. I have no idea if it's something like today, but the 50 period's at 815. So I do feel as if that is pretty reasonable. If we have a red day that turns into a 2 percenter kind of day and it does get nasty, this is a stock that when it flushed the 850, it's like hindsight being 2020, 850 breakdown would have been uh, pretty sweet. But yeah, if it gets back anywhere near into that 850, I would look for resistance. Possibly, possibly look at that close price as like your, your line in the sand. It'd be hard to imagine going green on a day like today on NVIDIA. But I'm looking at, I was looking at Coinbase already for the short. And oh, Bob is already pulling back. There's some things that might be immune, by the way. Like Tilray is a day two SSR play. That one's going to be in play for me. Alibaba because of the Chinese ADRs and Jack Ma being back in the fold. Jack Ma, not Mar. Jack Ma being back in the fold, I think, uh, can do its own thing. But I like 73 and a half, the 50 period on the daily uh, for Alibaba. Closing above. It's been a while since it's done this, but I, I do kind of like that 50 period. Going to have to give it some room. So many big spreads out here right now as well. So be very, very careful. Most stocks are going to have wider spread than normal. Like I just looked at Intel, and that for a second had a three cent spread. Yeah, we're already in Alibaba right now. We're just going to uh, massage these plays. This is going to be probably play number one or so on the sticky note as we've been really watching Alibaba for a while. Uh, taking it off of 72 bucks, nice upside move. We'll talk about that as we get the stories. But so far, so good, man. But watch out if we break 18,000. You are 100% right, Joe Schmo. I mean, this is, I, I just showed you the chart. You know, um, this could get real nasty. I mean, this is what we look like breaking back down below there. If we're going to go into a 60-minute chart, then it's going to probably look even worse because you do have a gap fill, right? So there it is, right? So here's 18,000, and then we can gap down to 17,850 after. Here it comes, 17,850 after that. Um, and then we can go all the way back. I mean, are we going back to, I mean, this is only February, but that's 17,4. Wow. So um, watch out now. I mean, some of these markets are getting a little spicy here uh, to start the day. But you're in the right spot, man. We're going to break the news for you. We're going to find some plays. We're going to get some. Uh, I mean, it's a nice. It's definitely a nice move in the NASDAQ. Uh, that's 400, 18.4 to 18. So you're taking it out right now. It's, it's been um, more than one year since the ES has had a minus 2% day. Maybe we're in store for that here today. All right, let's go back over to the desk. 3%. Yeah. Uh, we were just looking at, uh, yeah, the uh, inflation has broken the CME website there for a second, <laughs> but it seems to be updating now, but I don't think it's actually been updated. It's still lagging a little bit here. That, that was what it was at the end of the week last week. So uh, we'll come back to that again. Uh, here's the 30 year uh, taking out highs right now. So we're back to 4.6 on the 30 year, 10 years at highs, two years at highs. Uh, the dollar bouncing massively on this as well. Um, so a lot to consider here. If anyone's just joining a little bit late, let's uh, do a little uh, recap here real quick. Uh, yeah, it's not good. 0.4. I, I mean, a miss to the upside right across the board here. 0.4 versus 0.3. 3.8 on the core number versus 3.7 for March. Uh, the headline number 3.5 versus 3.4 percent. Again, across the board, missing uh, to the upside. So. Uh, the market's a uh, long way to go, potentially here. We're right back to the support on a daily time frame. And the short end of the curve, Brendo, really uh, taking uh, a hit here. And by hit, I mean up. Look at the two-year yield at, let's call it two-year highs, more. I, I can't, I, this is the daily. I haven't even looked at the weekly. 4.820, it's at highs right now, up two and three quarters, Brendo. I mean, we were talking about possibility of seasonality really leaking into that January number and maybe even February. How can you make the case for the March number? So a bit of a tough look here. Yeah, they don't have to. It's uh, the economy is still way too strong. Yeah. I'm looking at I can't show this, unfortunately, but I'm looking at a live quote of uh, Fed funds futures. Uh, the June quote right now, June and July are both still at five and a half. So basically expecting no change. Uh, again, I can't show this, unfortunately, but five and a half percent for both June and July, guys, on the uh, Fed fund futures right now. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I actually, it was working for a second for me, too, and I saw the same thing. But that's, uh, it'll, you're going to get some real adjustment on that. But I'm going to go back to a couple of things here. Like, I actually had some flat bottom break setups so I tweeted out this morning. One, which we mentioned yesterday on Micron, which was 121. And I feel like going back to a level like this, let's just go to the higher time frame. If you're going to break a level like this, then if it pops back in, 
then I'm looking to short that pop. So I want to get out in the 120. We have an hour to go, I mean almost an hour to go until the open, so there is plenty of time to get some kind of a, some kind of a bounce here. And I feel like the names that broke the major support are the ones that I'm going to want to fade back into. It was this, and then another one was Amazon breaking down through 184. Uh, so a couple of recent support, like local support levels that lined up really well on the week, uh, and also including the last week on Amazon, now down 2% in itself. Any kind of a bounce that gets me back into like the 183 half, where I could work into 184 here, or Micron 121 are going to set up. So this is one of the things you got to do, right? Like when you, when you have, the number can go either direction, but if you find yourself kind of most of your ideas lined up that the market might have gone up or been flat. When it goes to the downside, you got to flip. So support levels that got taken out in a big way, uh, that were big ones, I want to jump back into them and look for them to be uh, resistance. Again, not going to get trap myself shorting any bottoms on a move like this. I pretty much never, ever want to do that. Like if it's 835 on an 830 number and, it, and we go from like a flat to 1% on the futures, I'm not trying to hit that low. Or even, I mean, sometimes that high a couple of years ago was okay. But, you know, that's, that was a different market then. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're just starting a small little position here in Alibaba. I mean, you just review, you reviewed those numbers, Brendan. I mean, they're not great. I, I, I do feel like it's been, I think it's February of 2023. So it's been about a year and two months since the last time we saw the ES go down 2%. So we're in a raging, raging bull market right now. This could be the first time in two years, potentially, that we've seen the ES down 2%. I mean, it has to close there. So let's see if that does happen. It looks like it wants to get there. And I think it probably does. I mean, there comes um, the NASDAQ breaking 18,000. That seems inevitable at this point uh, right now. I mean, it still has a minute to go. It's at 18 1850, sorry. So once we get into those levels, then I do think there's going to be something to worry about. But yeah, um, it's not... It's not even that bad. It's just, it's pushing out the rate cuts. So that sucks because now all of a sudden cost of capital just becomes so much more and for so much longer. Uh, we had some report also about mortgage demand this morning. I mean, it's just, it's not as those rates ticked above 7% again. It's, you know, we're not getting that relief as soon as we thought that we possibly could get it. So, um, but okay. Again, I, I still feel like a lot of this is expected. It's not like it was a dramatically different number, but still a number, neither the less, that we're going to have to deal with. And I just want to buy the best names. I want to short AMD, probably short NVIDIA as they've been going through some rough times. Buy some Apple if we get down to some of these levels that we're looking at right now. Neil mentioned Google and Amazon. We like that. I'm on the sticky note there. We had TSM. We got a big number from them uh, on a pre-release. And then AMD uh, for a nice short. So, yeah, there's a couple ideas that we have. And I'm going to get them out to you soon, including Intel. Oh, an in interesting um, angle in the sense that uh, as far as stocks that are interest rate sensitive, I mean, this one, you just nailed this, you know, as far as um, being exposed to this. Yeah. Uh, it was the first one to pop up to the downside here this morning significantly. As far as individual names are concerned, down almost 3% at the low there initially for Tesla. Yeah, it's a tough look here, Brendan. We just gave back the entire move that we made up yesterday. But Elon made no bones about this on uh, two calls ago when, um, when the deliveries really went down. He said interest rates, elevated interest rates are really hurting his customers. Most people are either leasing or financing these cars. And uh, with higher rates, you know, being five some odd as, as the neutral, you're probably borrowing at seven or eight percent. That puts the car out of uh, the reach for a lot of people, seeing that they're already expensive as it is. So a bit of a tougher look here. We'll have to see how it does the rest of the day. Yeah, uh, a few other things moving around here. Here's the dollar. First off, DXY right back through 104.80 right now on its way towards 105 potentially. That's a 15 minute chart. Um, for the U.S. dollar, I want to mention this real quick. Soundhound, a few people talking about this early on this morning. Soundhound with an offering. Uh, so it's down large this morning as well. There's a note on Macy's I cited. It wasn't really moving. This is more with the market now, I think. But um, Macy's was down before the number uh, after the company ends proxy contest with Arc House Management. So a little bit of a volume spike there on that uh, E30 number. Some of the retail names, again, in that same boat. Yeah, Soundhound, really interesting here, Brendo. Uh, they're looking to file about $150 million, what they call um, a, a, 
a distribution, an equity distribution agreement. It's not all going to be at the same time, guys. It allows them uh, to raise money from time to time. So we'll have to see how they do their down, though, on that news. Uh, it has updated. Here's 74% now for June that makes sense. on a hold. So we're down to 25% chance, uh, call it 26 and change, uh, percent chance uh, for a cut now, guys, in June. Yeah, you, I mean, you knew that was going to change, like as if it was going to stay anywhere near 50-50 uh, in light of that. Um, I'd, be, I'd be pretty cautious with that SOU. And a lot of times I'd look at a stock like this down 10% and be thinking SSR bounce. But on a day where uh, it's going to have its own bad news and where we have this sort of surprise and then throw in the fact that, I mean, like, remember, like, this is like that NVIDIA adjacent, you know, that deal. So if NVIDIA has a rough day, then these guys could be under a lot of pressure. This was at $3 or $2.5 when it broke out, and it's seemingly hunting for at least the $3.50 to $4 uh, level today. So I'd be really cautious with this. Probably have to pay for locates, and there's so much out there that if it pops, I might want to take a shot going back at them. But, you know, the 450 level would be in play. I'm not thinking SSR for this. If anything, maybe a tiller rate. I did look at, like, Rivian didn't break. I thought on this move, maybe didn't remember that Rivian was all the way up at, like, $10.70. But now that $10 level on Rivian might come right back into play that we've been looking for the breakdown on. And I'm a little bit surprised by this one. That uh, maybe it's because DXYZ has already dropped like 70% from the highs or 60% 60, 60 from its top. But I'm surprised that this thing didn't move. Like it's all a bunch of startups and got inflated. I would have thought you'd be breaking down underneath 50 bucks and heading back into the 30s. There's some, in theory, there should be support, you would think, at the $30 level. So I think you'd watch that. If this gets a move to the downside... The, when it came to market, it topped out at 30, pulled back to 8, and then double topped at 30. There was some accumulation in there as well. Uh, I just feel like it's a logical price if this thing is going to calm itself down. I, somewhere around there or the $10 level would be the two places I'd watch for DXY. said, little surprise it didn't break down, but, I mean, it, it had already gapped down 22% from last night. So sometimes that's the case. Like you ex I, expect it, I expect DXYZ to move, but the simple fact is when... At the open yesterday, it was $107, and it closed at 64, and it was already at 50, regardless of that CPI number. But this should be on watch, probably DJ, uh, DJT as well. If we do end up flushing lower, this is something which probably doesn't hold on to the support. All right, we don't have any offers up, but we can start taking some profit if you guys want to on Alibaba. I mean, we're already starting it out right here. We'll hit the little bit of a siren. It's a nice trade um, to that downside. I'm just putting the sticky note out. should be out in about, about in a minute or so. Um, and just, you know, taking the best names, like we said, and just trying to make a little bit of profit here uh, to start. So we're long at 74.25. Um, the level that's on the sticky note is 74. It came in, so we took it ahead of or in front of that number. So the number came out, we, we took it, and we're just hoping for a continuation here. Uh, but we could start to punch out if we really were a little bit nervous. Uh, good start to the day here with Alibaba. There will be many longs to get here today, as well as many shorts. But, um, you know, so far so good. Let's see where we go. Alibaba, nice win so far. All right, I uh, wanted to show this kind of an interesting graphic to highlight what has happened as far as the CME Fed Funds tool is concerned. This is now um, so th this is the current rate, obviously. So May, June, May over here, J May, June, July. So going out to July, still a 51% uh, chance that we stay where we are currently. So September and then November is the first time you start seeing the uh, percentages get towards a quarter uh, percent cut. So uh, they push that June expectation of a cut now all the way out to potentially November here. Yeah, and you know what's surprising to me here, Brendo, is that housing and rent are not the biggest contributors to this inflation. So housing was only up 0.4%, while owner's equivalent rent was only up 0.4%. And as well, if you had look at the previous two prints, shelter inflation in general had been keeping that print artificially high. It's not contributing this time around energy up 1.1% by comparison. So we'll have to dig in a little deeper, see what's keeping these, uh, these uh, numbers up. Uh, it's been a while since we've had an overall market move off of 
um, an inflation print or a non-farm uh, payrolls number that has sustained, typically we get that flush and then a bit of a recovery. If it does turn into one of those days where you know, the move continues in uh, one direction, um, it's worth mentioning, I think, guys, for anyone who's going through this maybe for the first time, that you, you have to, any ideas you had before the number, you kind of have to put them in the, you know, in your back pocket on the, on the back burner for the time being and just watch price action, watch the overall market move. Uh, for example, Delta uh, downside ever so slightly here, positive news for Delta. It's still positive uh, on the day, very much so, but um, one of those days where the overall market move becomes more important. Yeah, I think that's, it is important. I think, but what you can do is, you know, there, there might be le like the levels that you have, like if it gets broken, well, then a, a big, big support level can turn to resistance and vice versa. And some of the, some of the levels that you might've had when you get an extended ex ex move that from a day, a day ago, a week ago, those can become very important. That's why you don't throw those out. Uh, if you, if you even just look at the NASDAQ, I mean, last week, we essentially had this move when uh, the bad Neil opened his mouth. And, well, okay, that's, there was geopolitical news as well, just like f characterizing it that way. And we essentially bounced off that level. So you'd almost like expect you could have that happen. Then you look back to where support was before. And if we can't crack above like an 18.2, I was mentioning Amazon, that 184, and then Micron 121, like little things like that, where you just go back to some levels that matter. And you can be fine, like Rivian $10. This is one of the first things that came into my mind is, is Rivian breaking 10? Do I need to have a stop order in? I mean, the answer is not yet because it's only at 1020, but that's what you, that's what you have to do. You just rewind a couple of days or uh, zoom out of your chart, zoom back out your chart, and you should be good to go. Or an example would be uh, Alibaba. You find something that, okay, shouldn't have as much of a reaction with the market in a typical sense where it can do its own thing, and then you can... Like, you know, Chinese ADRs, maybe uh, like a low float runner that just doesn't care, like a squeeze name sometimes if the market had been going up. And you, there are places that you can go to with a little bit more uh, confidence. I'm looking at some of the spreads are starting to be a little bit more reasonable as things are calming down, which is definitely a good sign. Yeah, we took our 25% up there at uh, 60 or 58, whatever that fill was there on Alibaba as we did bump up. We got as high as I think 60 or so, but we were sitting there and just got filled. So yeah, I mean, to, to Brendan's point, um, yeah, the, I mean, the major market move is the story. And I, all I think we have to do really is just pull back charts. I don't even think it's, it's super, I mean, we were just here two days ago. You know, like two trading days ago. I, I, this is not really, to me, anything overly dramatic yet. So I think you just stay the course. Um, that move does hurt, obviously, if you're long in the moment. But if you're long everywhere else, I feel like you're fine right now. This is kind of par for the course. It's, it's an economic release. We've seen much more dramatic than this. We've seen, um, you know, and much calmer than this. So for right now, I think you just stay the course. It's 18,000. We'll, we'll hover around there. We'll buy the best names. The sticky note is now out. So um, you, can, you can trade with me and, and, and hopefully have a successful day. And we, I don't know what's going to happen. Bitcoin 68,000 should be interesting as well. But let's go find out what Adair is up to at the, at the screen. Yeah, some interesting upgrades and downgrades here to talk about. Kava getting an upgrade here from Argus. Albemarle trading up about 2.5% at least uh, at this point. Uh, getting this upgrade from B of A Securities. Chevron getting an upgrade here from Barclays and B of A also upgrading CN here. For downgrades, Tesla kicking off the list here. Piper Sandler lowering its price target from 225 to 205 amidst those lower, uh, weaker than expected Q1 deliveries and also seeing lower EV demand in 2024 and 2025. So a bit of a negative note there on TSLA. Decker is getting downgraded here by Truist. Adiant getting downgraded here by Barclays and BVA Securities downgrading CF Industries to end the list here today, guys. Yeah, Chevron catching an upgrade. I mean, they didn't, I think they might be back on with that has Permian Basin uh, deal. XOM doesn't seem to want a piece of. Actually, almost exactly flat on the day. Uh, XOM, though, look, I know Chevron has the upgrade, but it's XOM that's hovering, that's still hovering on that massive level on the day. Let me just stop my trade ideas of XOM. That for me. Uh, X O M, there you go. Let's pull up the weekly. And this is still in the attempt. And it, like obviously, on a weekly chart, it has a very good shot of closing above this 120. Although it is Wednesday, a lot can happen in a couple of days here. And if you pop this over from that, 
to let's go with a daily. I love this picture in picture. Like it's kind of it's kind of a lot of fun. Uh, but then on the daily chart, it is actually holding the consolidation above 120. So I like this is still one that's on the radar. I only traded it the one day on the breakout off that 120 level. But any kind of weakness that comes into you know this particular name, like you've got a decent range. I, I'd put this on the trading radar more than than uh, Chevron because it just moves better. It's just a better day trading stock. I don't think we've ever day traded Chevron ever on the show, but XOM for, for sure. So the 120 level looks good. I just don't know if it's going to have the weakness to be able to get there. Uh, it's got a nice consolidation breakout if it can make a fresh high uh, on this 15 minute, but it's been a couple of inside days in a row. So this would be an example of a name that has a chance to allow you to trade it based off of what it was already doing in the last couple of days. So volume pretty light so far. Yeah, we um, we really like to trade XLE. I still have Alibaba up. Uh, we this this is the the energy name for me. I still haven't gotten anything out of this, but I feel like we might as well start to raise a little bit here, as oil has been on quite the amazing run, the bull market run of 2024 in energy and gold uh, right there. So, anyways, both outperforming the S&P 500. There it is, XLE straight to the upside. Some of these names just continue to be amazing um, for diversification. You just nailed XOM, uh, USO. We can check what that's happening today. On the real trading platform, we have uh, Nat Gas Futures, Oil Futures, everything. USO would just be an equity that you'd be looking to trade, and there it goes upside as well. So, yeah, um, nice movements abound here. I like the story um, in energy. We still have some unsettled, unsettledness in the world, unfortunately, politically, and that's going to keep oil, I feel like, high for now. And then plus some of these numbers that are coming out. I mean, you know, if, if air comes out of some of the stock market, maybe people start to continue to put their money. I mean, gold is up 14% uh, year to date. So that's beating the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 um, and continues to, to march higher. So all-time highs for gold should be another interesting play, especially if Bitcoin starts to fade out as well as some of these asset classes start to get rearranged a little bit here. I mean, is Bitcoin an asset class? We'll find out um, as those ETFs start to think, you know, add some validity to, to some of that. But 67, 68, we're still, we're still all in the mix here. I mean, we get super excited when Bitcoin goes to like 72, 73. We get super worried when it gets down to like 63. So being in the middle is kind of where I feel like right now and stuck in the middle with yes. coffee is Randy. So thank, thank you, Randy. Randy. I'm pretty sure we can turn those. Don't okay, change. Good, both Yesterday pairs. you changed it to a bull without me noticing. Yes. And I was like, no. Uh, thank you very much there, Randy. I was, I was, I I was close to messaging, but then there we go. I, I, I messaged. Filled. Just so you guys can tell we're actually drinking coffee, although it could be something else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. So yeah, a couple different, uh, di different uh, things to look at there. Tech, gold, energy. Um, all coming into play again. We're still okay with this Alibaba. It doesn't seem to be moving, but you know what is moving, and we're going to go over to the desk. Do we have a... We do not have a guest today or anything, okay? So um, it was just Apple. Apple is pulling back in and making lows right now on the day. So despite the futures kind of holding up a little bit, like 20, 30 handles from the lows, Apple is trying to make the lows as well. And I think... The major tech players were kind of following suit here as well. Yeah, so Google's all the way down. Someone said Meta was making a move. We just talked to energy. Let me just run over some tech names. Yeah, so Meta was the one that's been making the move back up to the upside. And then I think, I, you know, we've been talking about a bubble and all this kind of stuff. I sold Nvidia at 7, at 8, at 9, like all a mistake apparently, except for the last one, I guess. Um, but I... Any sort of a major dip, I really still think we should be buying more NVIDIA. So, uh, and, and we talked about where we're getting close to doing that. So 810, 815, 820, we might even get there today on a crazy flush. Yesterday we had that monster move down um, that was really well done from 850 all the way down to 830. That's $20 right there in about 20 minutes. And that started at the beginning of the day at 870. So yesterday at 9.45, oh, let's just do from the open. I mean, that's the more dramatic play. So 8.75 open yesterday, NVIDIA. By the time, you know, we were finished our second coffee probably, 10.55 down there. So about in an hour and a half, less than an hour and a half, you were down $45 on NVIDIA. And that was with no economic, nothing. Exactly, yeah. You know, so today this move kind of seems... 
pretty muted, which is what I'm trying to tell everybody. Like, let's not throw everything to the floor here. This isn't like that dramatic of a move, but we are going to get some good trading opportunities today in every single name. You're going to get the banks moving because they have, like, we have bank earnings in two days coming through. Shout out to the, shout out to the recap show. Hey, it's me. Um, we're going to be covering all these banks, and, and you're finally starting to fade out on this. So watch out when you lose this. Uh, Mr. Diamond, when's that hurricane coming, my guy? Your stock only went up like 40% since that comment. Um, all right, let's go back over to the desk. It's 9 o'clock, and we can start doing the rundown. You know, I was, we were just reading a crazy story. Somebody bought apparently 70,000 Fed funds uh, futures betting on the long side last night at the close ahead of this number this morning. So, ouch. Um, yeah, let's uh, get into everything else we need to know here heading towards the open. Uh, Shreve's going to have a look in the market. 52.60, guys. That's where we closed off yesterday, but we are in a completely different area now that we've uh, really retraced. We're below 5,200, 51.88 trading right now. The low this morning, 51.76. Unless we reclaim 200 before the bell, I'm going to say 5,200 as a level of resistance. Support a little bit hard to find here because we haven't been down here in a while. I'm going to go ahead and say that 51.25, that takes us all the way back to early March. If you have not done so yet, make sure you sign up for the watch list. Super easy. Go to the website, tradertv.live. That pop-up will appear. All you have to do is enter your email address, and then you get that every single morning in your inbox. Let's talk about uh, TSM was having a nice morning, minding its own business, higher um, after a better-than-expected uh, earnings report. But, uh, yeah, the overall market going to be the theme here. Now back to basically flat. So there are two good data points here, Brenda. One was the first quarter revenue, which they're projecting to be a lot higher than expected, about a 16.5% year-over-year increase. But there was specific to March. March was a monster month for them, apparently. 34.3% they're expecting uh, with respect to uh, comparing to last year. So that was TSMC. Also, Intel was in the headlines yesterday with their Gaudi or Gaudi three chip. Uh, it's supposed to be based on a five nanometer platform, which by default means they're, they're not making it. We don't know who's making it, but somebody other than Intel is making this Gaudi three chip. Yeah, trying to bounce right now a little bit, but uh, overall the market looking like I might want to roll over here again, but now negative guys for TSM. That uh, like it's, if you're, if you're in the chip space right now when you're flat, which TSM is, then it's still technically having a good day. So I came in today thinking TSM would probably be along. I don't think, I don't think you marry yourself to ideas like that. And obviously, it was in the midst of a bit of a mini breakout. Um, and then yesterday, it actually held out some of those highs. Like 43 looked really good. And you came back in looking at the previous close. It gapped up. And I would have been thinking on a strong number. Well, I guess on an... In, 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 as expected number in this particular case it would be. I'd be looking at a higher low. I just feel like today with the positive catalyst for TSM, if I'm looking to short back into the previous levels that I would have considered long, then I don't need it to be in this name. You know, like let, I'm, I'm gonna let sleeping dogs lie. If the market reverses it all, then TSM is probably a place that I wanna go to. If we get back above 18.2 in the NASDAQ and start climbing and looking really strong, then you know, this is gonna be one of the things that I, I wanna be involved in. Uh, you already met. You already went over Nvidia. The chances that we get the 850 from from yesterday are it's not impossible because Nvidia can move ten dollars if it wants to, but I do feel as if Micron was the one. Like it broke that 121 that I wanted for a flat bottom break. If that happened intraday, I probably take this trade and would be in it. But on the 830 number, I don't like getting wicked into. Like a technical level that I just like because it's been support or resistance for a couple of days. And then all of a sudden, a number comes out. I don't want to be taking trades just based on a blind technical uh, indicator on an 830 number. But after it's settled down, that support can turn into resistance for me. I'm already seeing 120 half uh, crest off here. So I'm going to get in first shot in front of 120 and a half to the short side on Micron. As far as Intel goes, had we got an update, I'd probably have bought. I mean, I would have been buying dips into 38 had the market stayed strong. But like everything else, it's like support turns into resistance, that 38 hold, that 38 five up here that I would have been looking for strength to base off of suddenly turns into resistance on this stock. Though the trend bottom on Intel for the last year and change um, sets up at about $36 on the daily chart. 
just underneath 36. And this trend line is held um, since February of 2023. It's been holding this trend line. That actually sets up, actually it's right at 36. I don't think we get to 36 today, but if we do, I'd be looking for a buy on Intel at 36 bucks. That's another $2 down from here seems unlikely though. What's up to, uh, what's his name in here? All Tank, is that what it was? All Tank, shout out to France. Uh, there you shouting out know, Toronto, shout out to Paris. Hello. Uh, and everybody out in there as well. The number one trade today, I've got Epic Pen over here. TSM is gonna be right there on the sticky note right here. So we got that uh, running through, we're pretty excited for it, 145 long. We wrote down all these levels, of course, before we had the um, number come out, so we'll have to readjust all of this. But I just feel like it's you know a nice pre-report there coming out today. We really, really like this name. I feel like we want to be long. We should probably already be long here. Uh, but the problem is the volume, pretty good, 700,000 shares, but the NASDAQ is not giving me much reason to go in there and buy at this time. So it looks like we're gonna be almost dead right about this 145 level. Um, seems like we, you know, we, we get there, then it bounces. Now we're really holding this 145. Feel like this could be a really, really big trade. Just, it's the number one idea on there. Part of me wants to take it now. We're already into Alibaba. We've already, we're already trading with a little bit of house money here. We only got out of a quarter up there so far. Wish it kept going, would have got out of more and would have put me into a little bit more confidence here with TSM, but I, I like it. And this is what I mean, like, you know, it's 04 by 45 right now. So that's to get 100 shares. So you can close the gap and try to get filled on a dark pool or something like that. But ultimately, even to take 100 shares and lose 40 bucks just on the gap right now, on the spread, Seems a little silly, so we'll just, we'll just wait for it to settle down. Hopefully we'll be able to catch this name here at some of these levels um, as the market opens up. But TSM is, sticky note, idea number one. So we'll be on that today. Alibaba should be probably number one, but I didn't get to it till after. So we'll talk about Alibaba. Um, that's why I'm in that one. I do feel more confident about it. But TSM right now, because it's a chip name, and because we've been nailing some of these chip names lately, AMD was stock two for me yesterday. Um, and we're, we'll see if we can do that. I know NVIDIA was obviously a great trade yesterday as, as well. We talk about that every day. Intel was a great trade yesterday, yep. even after the, um, the uh, meeting or the Well, the event, whatever the event. that it's called. So, yeah, TSM, definitely on radar. My eye's going to be there for sure. Uh, just reading through uh, some comments here. Fed's Bowman speaking right now. Apparently does not com uh, comment on monetary policy, though. So just uh, heads up on that. There's a note that came out as well. I'll just read the title. Inflation poses risk of interest rate increase. Really? Okay. Anyway, uh, let's talk Apple here. Uh, we were discussing a few angles uh, surrounding India last week. Here's a couple more positive notes. Uh, first off from um, Apple, $14 billion worth of iPhones being produced in India so far this year. New report this morning from Bloomberg uh, suggesting they continue, uh, you know, as they laid out and said yeah. they were going to move more yeah. and more production over to India. What do we call this, Brendo? It's not, it's not nearshoring. No. We, it's India as far as hell. But we'll call it friendshoring here. So, um, yeah, look, one in seven iPhones now is being made in India. Um, this is by design. They're trying to, di not divest, but, you know, um, look for other opportunities other than China with respect to who's making these um, iPhones for Apple in India, Foxconn, Pegatron, and now a newly added group, this one owns Jaguar, Tata. Tata is getting in on the action as well. It's creating about 150,000 jobs and they're receiving a lot of financial in, uh, incentives from the Indian government, so we'll see how they do. Yeah, not, I mean, not a huge news story today. I, we were expecting this to come at some point, but um, Apple now negative, as it was uh, with the rest of these gapping to the upside this morning. The good news for Apple is it hasn't broken its major support level. Right, so I mean, obviously everything's going to be almost everything's going to be down in a situation like this. You have the early March low was just underneath 168. The October low was 66. We're right down into that 68 level. So looking for some kind of a turnaround play that isn't a short to pop, a support, support till it till it ain't. And if we get down another like 50 cents, we got 20 minutes to the open, but I'd like to think that's pretty reasonable that you could be retesting that support on Apple just for like, like a nice little bounce play. And Apple's the kind of stock 
that it's it's typically not the most volatile. Like it's it's not usually going to go four or five percent if the market goes two. If the market goes two and Apple's having a bad day, it might go three or two and a half. So I think it'll stay in the pocket, which means if we do get any kind of a bounce outside of that level, I mean, like trading Apple anything but at 68 or 170 up here for a fade doesn't make any sense to me. So when you're down at this price, would you like a flat bottom break through that low? I mean, it's very, very tight around the 68 level. So I'd rather look for some kind of a long there. If we get it, we'll take a shot at it. I don't want to be catching falling knives. My style of trade at the open is ideally doesn't always work it that way. Sometimes you get that FOMO and just get in because you get in too early. No, but I'd like to see it do a wick. Show me a little bit of a bounce. Come back to the chart. Like, show me this where I can either get back in on a level like that or look for a long off a higher low. But that's what I would be playing off 168. Uh, on Apple. If we see those highs, 170, 170 and a half, yeah, it could be worth a fade, but I promise you, if Apple gets up to 170, I'm already short Amazon, I'm already short Micron, and possibly a couple of others. Um, yeah, we've, we've been really, Apple's been probably my top stock all week, just as a consistent basis. I think we've made more money on, on individual names. Uh, other than Apple, just on random sort of trading and stuff like that. But as you can see here, no, we want that. As you can see here, this little, here, let me get rid of this. This is my pen that I'm going to be using to draw with. But down here at 168, I feel like there's, there is some support there. But uh, on today's market, there's no way I'm stepping in. I don't know why my chart's not going back any more than this. But um, Apple is very, very tipsy here, could break. And when we do, I think we see 160. I see Hamster in the chat saying, you know, possible issues with the headset things like that. I'm not, honestly, for Apple here today, if we're just going to look at this, a move back up to, they're just obvious things, like what Neil was mentioning there, just these levels that I think we want to short if we get that opportunity. So 170, 169, 70, just in this area, yesterday's close. I mean, the market's going to be red today, right? I mean, if we really bounce back, then we bounce back. But for right now, I'm pretty, you know, pretty bearish on some of this. You know, we have TSM, we have Baba, we'll get to some of these. We have Tesla, we have Apple India, Tesla India. So um, we have a lot of India action coming on soon. Uh, Tesla could be another one of these plays that has had good news lately. That you, excuse me, you could find some bouncing uh, spots here as well. So let's go back over to the desk, find out some news about Tesla, and see if maybe this is a name that we can get long in and around that 170. That's right now, in fact, off uh, that support from early on yesterday morning. I mean, the overall market about to make a low, it would appear, oil taking out the highs. Uh, there's not much. I mean, uh, Elon going to be in India uh, mm -hmm. coming up before the end of the month, just, um, I guess, finalizing these plans as far as the manufacturing facility is concerned. Uh, more than $2 billion going into India. If you missed it last week, we touched on it. Uh, for a new plant there, there's been discussions going back to, I think, the middle of last oh, yeah. year is when this actually started. So another company here um, moving in that direction. Yeah, exactly. As you said, Brendo, I mean, it really uh, started when uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi was in New York, met with Elon separately away from the White House. Look, Elon's going there to meet India's richest man. He goes by the name of Mukesh. Ambani, I hope I didn't butcher that name. Uh, they're going out there. He's sending a, Elon is sending a team of Tesla reps. They're going to scope out different areas for the plant that they want to build. They're looking at uh, places in Gujarat as well as Tamil Nadu for uh, for that particular plant. But they said this is still very early in the stages and nothing has been decided with respect to teaming up with this company, Brendo. Yeah, we heard from uh, Dara there pointing out that Jeffrey's note this morning with a downgrade. Uh, Piper Sandler actually maintaining overweight, I just see here, um, on Tesla. They did lower the price target, but uh, still at overweight for Piper on Tesla. Yeah, so I think when you, when you have analysts that have very differing opinions on Tesla, you have to remember, and this is the unfortunate thing about analysts, is that you only get like, oh, you upgrade, downgrade, and a price target, and you don't hear their thoughts always. Um, some of them are just com going to compare Tesla and be grading them as if they were um, like legacy, just any other uh, car company. And then you're going to have some analysts that are like, no, this is not a car company. It's like a tech AI uh, play, and they're just going to have a whole set of different expectations, and it's not going to be apples to apples. So unless you know what you're dealing with there, it gets a little bit tricky to care about the analyst expectations uh, with regard to Tesla. What we can care about, however, 
is this was, this has been in a channel. I know it's volatile within in the channel. It's a $20 channel, 160 to 180. I kind of thought the test to get to 180 was going to continue today with, you know, the 174. Like, it's kind of easy to see. Like, two days ago, we had the rebound day. 171 was a long into 174.5. 174 174.5 was, like, the breakout to dip price. I thought we'd take another stair step to the upside or potentially on the number. We didn't. So this needs to get back above 174.5 or 175. Uh, to look good. It does have a potential breakdown underneath 171 as well. I do feel like if that happens, I'm probably shorting Rivian through 10. Uh, Rivian now within that quarter, I did, I kind of wavered on whether I was going to put the order in. I just decided, look, it's already dropped 3.5% here. I'm going to get the order in now and just take it for like a third of the amount of shares that I would normally because of how big the drop is uh, if it gets to that level. I just don't need to be all in on a break when it's already moved down uh, 6%. So that's the order I'm gonna have at the open. I'm not going to have orders on Tesla at the open. I want to see how it plays out in this $3 range. If we can, if the market just breaks lower and it breaks lower, then there's a decent chance I will be looking shorts underneath this 71. Prove to me that it wants to trade outside of this range. And the good news is if it trades out higher, I'd be looking for longs. If it trades out lower, I'd be looking for shorts. In the middle in Tesla, I'm looking to do nothing inside of this uh, void. Let's call it like the void zone for, uh, for me on Tesla. So yesterday we absolutely gave probably, probably the best trade for me off the open, and we didn't even take it, was this break here on Tesla. We talked about breaking the top there. We took Google, which turned out to be a banger. But also Tesla uh, right here as well, yesterday breaking that high of 74 and then, or 75, whatever it was in the pre-market there, and then just straight up. So again, today, if this market rebounds, I, I feel like it's very, very similar play as possible right here, like a 174.50 long break, something like that, 174.50, yeah. Like I don't mind that as a break spot right there as well. So I feel like that's something that we could uh, eventually take here today, 174.50 and change right there on um, Tesla. So let's see if that's gonna be a possibility for us to grab that long. I mean, I'm close to doing, I'm close to putting that trade in. We only have 17, well, it's 9.17, it's so only 13 minutes left until the open. The imbalance locator, pretty, I mean, I would say it's, it's sell side here. Again, not very many names. You know, Carnival's gonna be there. They had a little bit of a move down on some negative press, yeah. So um, moves down here on Carnival from 16 down to 15 right now. Other than that, we're not really getting too many big names doing one way or the other. GM 80,000, there's Baba with a buy, so that's good for me. A Chevron with a buy, but other than that, pretty muted. There's Barrick right there with a neutral, so not much going on there. But uh, for right now, we'll have to wait to see about this market. I do like Tesla getting long and getting excited through that 174.50. So again, probably a trade that will miss right off the open, but let's look at that level today, 174.50. Well, giving back some of this gap now with the overall uh, market move, but if you missed it uh, early on this morning, Jack Ma coming out, um, putting his support, I guess, behind uh, the transition of company leadership. There's also a few positive notes from analysts as well. Benchmark with one. Uh, JP Morgan, I guess, was uh, yesterday. I saw another one. I'll go find it. But uh, anyways, uh, nicely positive to start. However, things have obviously changed again. Yeah, nice to hear from Jack Ma. We haven't heard from him since he really, uh, you know, disparaged the company last year and actually praised their competitor, PDD, uh, PDD Holdings, uh, who has obviously done quite well versus Alibaba. It's nice to say that his memo this time had a much more upbeat tone and he was praising some of the new leadership. So we'll have to see how they do uh, up nicely this morning, Brenda. Uh, where is the trade, John? You're already looking at this. I have it as, uh, thanks, Brendo. I have it listed as the number one, uh, well, I'll call it my number one. It's the number three idea. I've really liked Alibaba coming from this level here. They were up 5.5% yesterday uh, there in China. Let me just uh, move this down. Let's put this down here until we need it. We were up 5.5% yesterday there in Hong Kong. Uh, this bottom at 71, 72. I was talking with my guy Mateo in the back as well. We really like this play. Buying down here in and around 71, 72 bucks. Now you bounce above 
the 50 period moving average, that's down there at 73.50. So yeah, we're gonna take advantage of this. I like the long as I was sitting here before uh, CPI. I was like, I really like the long. Where did we like it? We had the 200 period at that time, um, was in and around 74 bucks. If you're gonna look at a 20 period moving average, or 20 period chart, sorry, you're gonna have this move gap fill into 74. I think that's a good spot to start the bidding. So that's exactly what we did. And then down into here, I think this 7350 is an awesome, awesome level. So we've written that down there. You can go find it on the sticky note. I, I just, gapping up, that's the play that I like. I like the gap up. If we could fill it, then let's see what happens. Breaking 73 would be a problem. And honestly, if that happens today, it happens today. I'm gonna lose on a position that I believe in because this month it's been absolutely hot fire and we're gonna keep trusting what we're doing, man. And um, yeah, 73.50 would be a great spot to get long on this one. I would still, I probably won't buy any more 74s. We're already kind of long in this area, but you know, on a dip down off the open, we are a huge buyer of Alibaba. Yeah, I'm, the thing about that one, like it was the first one, it was actually the first name that I put down on the iPad and it was, a, it was, it's not the first name that's on my note when I threw it, but it's the first thing that was there. And I put it forth on the note and it was the same thing. It's a 50 period moving average on the daily. And you're finally, like you're gapping above it. The last couple of times that this has tried to test it, it's essentially, like it was above and pulling back in and trying to hold. This time it's gapping above that level. So if resistance turns into support, I'm on the bid in the 60s here, looking for it to get down into the 73 and a half. So I wanna be playing off of that. And then you look at yesterday's highs. Yesterday's high, 73.20 something, and then you go back a couple of days, that's like 73.20. I think that gives you an area to be buying into. That's 73 and a quarter. And the thing about BABA is it's entirely possible for the Chinese ADRs to go a little bit askew to what the market does, only because we're not likely to get, because Roblox had some news. Um, I, I also want to mention uh, NEO today. It was, this is one that was going to be a 480 break for me. Um, I'm thinking that's pretty unlikely with the number being what it is and it not being great for EVs in general. So I'll, I'll stick that one on the back burner. However, the short at 480 was good yesterday, so I would suppose can always go back to that well if there is a bump. But you know, when I sat down this morning, this was sort of, it was screaming to me a 480 breakout on NIO and things have very clearly changed uh, at this point. So you have to make that adjustment. Uh, just seeing an alert on Rivian, uh, back to 1025. So down three and a half already for Rivian this morning as well. Uh, let's talk uh, Roblox here, uh, teaming up with Pubmatic uh, for immersive video ads uh, on their platform. So this thing's actually holding up quite well here, uh, considering the overall market moves to almost 3%. Yeah, as you were telling me off camera, 71 million active users per day. Uh, looking to monetize some of that, obviously. Uh, they're gonna restrict all their ads to individuals 13 years uh, of age or older. Uh, I don't know what the, the demographic is on that, uh, on that platform, but the uh, Pubmatic Incorporated, which is doing their ads for them, trades under ticker P-U-B-M, if you guys wanna have a look. And also, uh, Roblox will report on May 9th, and it's widely expected for them to post a quarterly loss of 53 pennies. Uh, just noting, uh, 10 is actually the, the bigger level. Uh, I couldn't remember if it was 10 and a quarter, but uh, 10 actually the bigger level on uh, Rivian. Oh, you really threw me there when you said 10 is the bigger level and you're just talking about Roblox. I'm like, I would hope 10's a big level on Roblox. If Roblox even sniffs $10, I think a lot of people would be backing up some trucks. Uh, the, volume, the volume might be a problem early on, because I'm not seeing crazy pre-market volume and a bit of a spread on Roblox. But I'd watch the, if 40 can hold on a day where the market's weak, that's the 50 period. There's, there's no bid offer here at all. Like, you know, a couple, couple of hundred shares, I think at each level, starting at 40.10. You can see that there has been a good consolidation. It didn't really, it didn't really do much damage when the number hit at 8.30, which is a good sign for Roblox. So if this holds 10 at the open, it would look like something that can be along. You know how I feel about Rivian. I think you've got a chance that you see that $10 level. It's already bounced once. Actually, check that. That's not true. It's bounced. It bounced once recently and then the second time, but it also bounced in February. So it's bounced a couple of times off that $10 level. If it gets there again today, I'm still looking for that breakdown through 10 even. You know, 
we see it, we'll try to hit it. It won't be SSR or anything like that. So when it breaks, I think there's a reasonable chance. Like you're getting 98 or 99 when that thing breaks. I, I, I think that's, like 98 is probably in the worst case scenario uh, for something like Rivian. Plenty of liquidity. It's done well over a million shares already uh, in the pre-market here as well. Yeah, we've, um, we've talked about Rivian at that $10 level. Definitely something that we'll want to we'll wanna look at. Look, Roblox, I mean, let's go. This is a, again, we really like this stock. It's trying to break back above the 50 period moving average. We've been talking about some of these bases down into here. You know, again, it's been holding this $35, $36 level. We came right back in. There wasn't too many names that have come in to some of these levels. I mean, now, uh, after today, maybe, uh, we're getting some names that are coming into some of these levels from the fall. But uh, Roblox did, and now it's taking this out. Uh, again, I feel like the big concern here is the age restrictions and privacy issues and things like that. So if they can try to address that, get more ad space going. I like Roblox. My kids are all over it. I continue to support the company, um, both financially and in the stock. So let's wait to see what happens here. $36, $37, a great long for Roblox. Um, if we get a dip buy opportunity, even into yesterday's close, I kind of like that as well. $39. It's now $9.25. So let's take a quick look to see if there is anything on these imbalances right now, moving the market one way or the other. We're still nicely in Alibaba right now, which is 30 cents in the money. So we'll take that for now. Uh, Pfizer with a sell. There's TSM with a buy. Already a dollar in the money. But again, we didn't want to sit there and take it. Like if this comes to sell, then it goes a dollar the other way. So watch out for 145 on TSM coming through. Alibaba was just there somewhere. Intel with a buy. So that's another name that's on watch a little bit. But other than that, man, Lucid a buy. Yeah. So, so far, so good. Oh, we get a lot of talk about SoFi sometimes. That's only at 760, which is pretty good. I know it's down today, but we had a nice move up to eight bucks yesterday. Watch out for SoFi possibly getting some love today. Could be an interesting one, I and mean, we've been talking about that for a while. It just doesn't seem to want to get going. We haven't, we didn't really mention crypto much. I mean, a little bit um, down. I bet down two percent, but remember, crypto is a twenty-four hour market. But if we do get back and retest this consolidation, we're at the close. That'd be one thing. Would be hard to imagine it gets back above those levels. And if that were the case, that it gets anywhere near there, I got Coinbase on the radar here, like that two forty. It's about 242 was the bottom, and then in here to like 45, 46. Like that's where I'd be looking to grab a little bit short. I see Intel, I mean, 200,000 buy and bounce on Intel isn't huge when it's done 1.2 million, but buy and bounce nonetheless, it's starting to creep back above afternoon support. This is the name that had the good news yesterday. It went from like a short and more of a short to a sort of a screaming long, and then when it got to that 38 and a half where it fell from, right back to short. So it was a good trading vehicle yesterday in either direction, just as long as you had it with the momentum uh, either way. So I feel as if with the good news, if it can hold this range at the open, I'll be looking for longs. I think Intel's in the bucket with you know, TSM where they had some good news going for it and it's not nearly as weak as some of the other names I'm looking at. So I want to at least initially look for longs above 38, but it has to hold. You got two minutes until the open. We're going to see a wath of volume come in that isn't reacting, that hasn't reacted yet uh, to the numbers. Ooh, I just got Micron, so we wanted Micron back into the 121. This was a name that I thought was a flat bottom break, but I didn't put the order in to take a flat bottom break at 830 because I don't like doing that on an 830 number. So Micron coming in here, I want to be short back into yesterday's. Uh, well, technically, yeah, yesterday's lows, but also last week you had multiple bottoms here off of 121. 59.50. Um, yeah, we'll put in, I mean, I don't think we're going to get anywhere near AMD. I was just looking at 169, you know, as a possible move to the upside here. It's at 167. Well, now it's at 166.50. Uh, so we could have moved up there $2 for sure. NVIDIA, again, with a monster, monster move the other day. Uh, every day, it seems like it has a big, big move in it. Yesterday's bottom looks like it's going to get broken, potentially off the open, but that's 8.30. So that could be, is that another smash level? 8.50 was awesome because it's a option level. Uh, everyone looks at these, you know, 8.50, 900, 8.25. You know, it's just, is 8.30 one of those levels? It seemed to be that yesterday. So that could be an, a, another one right there. But again, a move back to 8.50 is not out of the cards either if they want to buy this market back. So just... 
It's about being patient right now. We have some Tesla trades that we like if we can get back in a little bit on this one as well into the 170 area, although that seems like a little bit of a uh, rush as well to get to there. So only 30 seconds to go until the U.S. market opens. Apple dancing around that 169 level as well. So that could be another trade. There's so many things that could possibly happen in just a few minutes. The only name I'm in is Alibaba. Seconds. As we get the countdown on it's a Wednesday, it's hump day, it's CPI day. Let's go, Adair, in five, four, three, two, and... Right. There is the ring, subdued ring. I guess when it's a down market, we get more of a subdued ring uh, out there. Uh, where is, I want to check NVIDIA first because we're in that micron. Okay, I wanted to short a pop. If we get 850, if it goes to 850, it goes to 850. I will be kind of calm with that. Uh, Intel can't hold 38, so not an early look there. Amazon, I was looking for a short back into 184. That's a possibility as it comes into 183 and a half here. So that's a possibility you could come into that 184 for Amazon. Getting pretty close. All right, we're, um, we're buying a couple dips. We, we just got a little bit of TSM, but we are going to wait. We don't want to be um, you know, weak hands at all right now. I feel like if we have this, we have this. Alibaba's not open yet. Uh, okay. Is it? No, not open yet. So it's just dancing around. When this opens, you're going to see hopefully a monster winner on this trade right here for Alibaba. As the market's trying to figure itself out. So far, so good. Not doing a whole heck of a lot. Uh, just checking in on AMD. So the temperature right now feels kind of muted to me. Uh, any kind of bumps up would be nice. Maybe 167.50. Let's just check out on NVIDIA quickly uh, to see what's going on there. 838. Again, watch out for a monster flush in this name if it gets going there. I don't know. Uh, Alibaba still not open yet for Alibaba. So they're going to figure out how high to open this one up, and then we'll deal it from it from there. So far, so good, man. 30 cent winner in Alibaba, 30 cents in TSM. It's two for two to start, but that's about it. Yeah, we just got in and out of Micron. Same price, though, but we didn't, it never broke 121. And uh, I just saw, well, 121 and a half, and I saw it go above that 50. I'm like, okay, we probably just put the wrong stop order in. So I'm going to get right back into it. Amazon has not hit. NVIDIA is getting into the 840 range. So it's starting to scream up. But Intel is still holding underneath 38. So nothing doing over here in terms of that strength. You check back in on the TSM, and I'm not really seeing anything going on uh, too crazy there. It's actually pulling right back in. So you're getting some strength in the chip names that I wouldn't have expected. I would have expected to be an Intel and TSM. You're seeing it in like the Microns and the AMDs and the NVIDIAs. Let's see what's going on with that. Oh, it was Neo is the other name that I wanted, but nothing up there in the 480 range. So we're going to have to play the patience game with NIO. Uh, 480 was yesterday. We'll go 48 again today. All right. I mean, you guys can see we've um, completely switched up our style. You know, we'll go two for two so far. There it is, an early dollar winner. So that's it right there for TSM. Um, the, the number one name on the sticky note is a dollar to start with. Um, Alibaba as well still does not appear to be open. So yeah, so far so good. Um, let's just let, let's let TSM sort of do its own thing here, and um, yeah, that's that. So let's check out on AMD right now, trying to get back up to the upside. Let's go TSM, man. We are really, like this is what we do. I don't know, I mean, you guys have noticed this, I, I hope. Uh, but right now, AMD, nice move to the upside. We'll, we'll have to settle that down. We're waiting at 169.50. I might even cancel that. I'm gonna cancel all my offers right now and just let these things sort of uh, cruise around. We're gonna go two for two so far here. Um, very early days, man. It's 9.33 right now. Intel, if that can move upside, we'll do that as well. I know Neil had that micron, so we'll look about getting back inside of that, and I know you're in Amazon right now. So two for two over here. Let's go find out about Amazon. Yeah, Amazon just came in at 184. Micron took out that 121.5, so that was the one we wanted. We'll go red on it. We'll give up yesterday's micron today, but here comes Amazon into that flap, uh, the other flat bottom right break into 184. Good. Are you sure Bob is not open? That's, that's Neil, man, I have, I have a man of integrity. No, I'm, I'm looking at the level two. It's just it's, I've, it's three minutes in. It's a bit weird. I looked over at it. I have level two up now. I'm not thinking we're getting that 74 anytime soon. Tesla was the other name that we had a nice level on, but it doesn't hold above the 174 and a half. But a higher low, I said I want to be a buyer above that price, which sets up a 75 uh, break. So it's open now. 
not, well, it's not really tanking at 120 cents. But uh, sorry, uh, Tesla, if it holds above 174.5, that now sets up a 175 potential breakout trade. So I'm only in Amazon as we speak. NVIDIA never came in. 2850, so nowhere close. Neo never came to 480. It's still at 462. And as you were saying there, Alibaba uh, holding, it's holding 74. Yeah, I'm yeah, at it's 73 still... and a half. So, I mean, it made a move down at the open, but they held that open for quite some time, which is a little bit, uh, it's, it probably doesn't mean anything, actually. We got out of 56 there of another piece, so we only have half of our Alibaba right now. We, I mean, just as it was opened up. Uh, shout out to my friend Nimit. What's up, Nimit? Yeah, no, man, energy's fine. I told you, this is completely different. You know, we are now just chilling. We are letting the results speak for themselves every single day here on the show. So, um, yeah, we don't, we don't need to get too excited. We'll stay level-headed, and we're doing our, we're doing our thing here. So um, let's just see what happens with Alibaba. Hopefully it goes back up to the upside. And we got another reload position, but we didn't get out the first time. So here comes TSM back in into these levels. We want to get a little bit more, uh, if we can, of course, as we mentioned, down into that 145 area. So um, right now it's good temporarily. It's only 935. Uh, we heard from, and again, this is part of me changing, right? On the Market Recap Show, we had Brian Shannon on, and we talked about waiting for a little bit, you know, when you're into your trades and being very, very patient with them. And again, we also talked about believing in what you're doing. Um, so we're just going to keep, keep doing that. And if we're wrong on something, we're wrong on something. But that just really hasn't happened lately. So let's uh, be confident. And if the, today's the day that everything sort of uh, hits the fan, that's the day that hits the fan. But uh, we're 40 cents, 50 cents in the money on Alibaba. We're 30 cents in the money on a reload of TSM. And as I said, the numbers, the positions, and everything will hopefully speak for themselves. And Adara will speak right now. See, we're here, Delta Airlines, DAL, now up again about 3.5%, so recovering pretty nicely with, with nice volume here off of the open. They did report an earnings beat, and they are set to have their conference call from what I'm seeing at 10 a.m. So keep an eye on DAL as we're about 25 minutes from that call, guys. Uh, DL, we didn't mention, the, obviously the only earnings name out there. Nice move, but $50 is your breakout. If it can get through 50 I think that gets a little bit more exciting. Uh, Intel is now in the range. It just held that 38 level for the first time, so you're now seeing a consolidation and a breakout above. So I'm Why going for the TSM? long Don't above. That. And there it is. Tes Tesla as well. Uh, Amazon just came dollar. out. Uh, but Tesla is holding. No break. Never mind. Tesla was right there. It was about to break. I have the order in to go. But I feel like every time I have a breakout trade and then mention it, it doesn't actually break the 75 level. And it seems like every stock that we seem to mention these days produces something. I don't know, man. There's a dollar for Alibaba right there. We'll take that. There's a dollar for... We're two for two, both dollar winners. So again, guys, trade however many shares you want to. It's 9.37. If you put, you know, numbers on these, then you're probably done right now. You know, it, it, you don't, like I keep saying, you do not have to sit here and punch keys, millions and millions of trades, just to put up L's, okay? Find your levels, do your research. This is what it's all about, man. These are the two names here. It's 937, both names dollars. So let's just keep, let's just keep doing the grind, man. Keep putting in the work. That's what we're doing, man. We're not getting sleep, but we're putting in work. Here we go, TSM, nice move uh, one more time here. That's a dollar, Bob is a dollar. Let's go do some more work on Apple right now and see what's happening with Apple. Oh, so day. Apple down there, down into 168. Notice how we left this alone. You know, um, we're getting into some levels now where potentially I could get interested here in and around 168. Moderna's a nice little mover here today again as well. We'll look at some levels there for Moderna, 108, 108 and change right now, pulling back in for Moderna, down that 3% right now. Okay, maybe TSM is really, really, I mean, that's now, let's go. Now we're at $1.50 in the money. On your number one trade idea, as discussed here live this morning at 8.30, as soon as it got thrown over to your boy, TSM, that's what we're talking about. And there it is right now, $1.50, $1.80 now, going 70 cents in the money right now for Baba, $1.50 in the money for TSM. Um, all things seem to be a well today. And I said to you guys, don't panic. You know, I sound like some Aaron Rodgers action over here. You know, stay in your pocket there, man. We said this was not a huge move. And there it is, man. Nice move there for TSM. Let's get a piece out at 147.15 um, and then just move off of it 
Good trade so far here today. Market could still do absolutely anything, as we all know. So, um, yeah. Speaking of moves. So far, so good. NVIDIA tagged 860. Boom. $860. Let's see. Like yesterday it was 875. Apple just came into evens. I got 11s in front of 168 even. Uh, Intel at 38, so we're into that. I didn't think you would get above 850, but there was zero trade there. It saw the level. It broke the level. By the time I even saw it was at 850, it was at 855. So the next level up is like 870, where everything started from uh, yesterday morning. So 24 hours ago, if we get back to that price. This is a screaming opportunity, I would think, but I gotta get over, it's not there yet. We'll get over to Apple. We like the dip buy off 168 in Apple. We waited for it to get there. It's relatively, relatively weak to the market. So if it gets to VWAP, I have to keep that in mind here for Apple. So I'm gonna get some offers in front of 168 and a half. Wow, that's insane on Nvidia. The other one that's going, uh, AMD back up at 169. I like Ooh. 170. I like 170 into 171 for that stock. So that could actually come into play any second now. Uh, so gonna be patient with those two. I'm still looking for a dip off support in Baba, although it's not really giving it to me just yet. Uh, Intel we mentioned already holding right about that consolidation level. So it held 37 three quarters. Started in at 38 even. I'll be adding here at 37.75. But watch out. It's, it's, it's the chip names that are going ham. I'm going to make an assumption. Yeah, SMCI went $60 to the upside. That feels, that feels a little bit heavy as well. Uh, just double checking the levels. 931's resist. It's actually $20 away still from resistance on SMCI. Though. Another one. I mean, there it is right here. We're, in, we're, in, we're trying to get another one going here. We're in SMH. Let's just see what happens here for this. Um, we're in this short. We just shorted it at 40s. It went all the way down to O's. We now have a bid there to see if we can get something out uh, at O's exactly. So here it comes in right here. We'll put another 40 cents on the damn board. What? Whoa. Almost dropped the mic. What exactly is happening here? Three for three on this side over here. And um, we get pretty excited once again because, hey, guys, you know, we're here to make money. We're here to put on a show. This is exactly, hopefully, what we're doing for you. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. I hope you've got some great trade ideas from Neil and I so far uh, here today, man. Three for three on the board. SMH now 40 cents. TSM a dollar, take it if you want. Alibaba 50 cents right now as well. So, I mean, let's go. You can see the numbers, you can see what we're putting up. I just hope you guys are having a good time and taking advantage of some of these trades here today. 147.25 for TSM. Because we're short, actually I already put an offer there, didn't I? Um, because we're already short here, on uh, the SMH and really starting to, oh my God, Neil, we're gonna have three trades and all three might give everybody that club right there. We'll see if we can go three for three here as SMH coming back in. Good look, hopefully on NVIDIA. Uh, we'll see what we're doing over there, but how's the trading on your side? I'm not in, in, I'm not in NVIDIA. I said NVIDIA 870 was the level I was looking at for NVIDIA. It's actually ARM, which might be on the radar. NVIDIA is looking a lot stronger. And then someone in the chat, and I didn't catch who because I was going through all of the names that I liked, ARM already rejected underneath the resistance level that I like, which is underneath 128. So I'm going to put it on under 127. Apple's still bouncing off. It's gone 15 cents in the money. I'm not taking it there. But it's holding that 168 level nicely. But this is... It's a big breakout on NVIDIA, and maybe we do see 70s, but I'd rather look at something which did not break out those tops. Still want to stay relatively patient here. Intel's holding on. Now you're starting to see NVIDIA come back in. I feel like ARM is just a better bet because it did not break out that top. It actually rejected it. You had the ES and the NASDAQ still down a point. Well, the NASDAQ still down a point. And I never got into Alibaba, but it's starting to, like, it just held 75. If it bounces off 74, then I will change my tone about... 73 and a half being the entry spot. Apple still holding here. Okay, arm just came in. Uh, Apple still holding here off 168. We're gonna take some out of 40s. We're gonna get that, we're gonna get out in front of 194. And Intel starting to make a bit of a dance higher. With Intel, I want it stair step up. So if it's getting higher lows, I wanna get 38. And if it can hold above VWAP, then I wanna be adding off of VWAP. If it's gonna do that pattern, I think there's a lot of ways it can get to 38.70, and that's about 70 cents, that's 2% move on Intel, and it should be multiple longs if it can do something like that. All right, we're gonna go down to 22.50 here. I didn't even, was looking for other opportunities, and we should have put a bid on SMH uh, there. I didn't even realize it was coming into the 200 period, so we'll put, 
we'll put a bid there now and see if it will fade back in into that level. So this was uh, another dollar, as we just mentioned to you guys, in the money right there. There goes TSM, by the damn way. Sheesh, sheesh is right right here. It is, so far, so good. We'll put the trophy over here, keep it here for now, and see what we can do with that. But so far, so good. SMH could take this trophy away, uh, but we'll see. Um, nice move here. We're gonna get out if this breaks the high of 224. So in and around there, the market is starting to go back to the upside right now. That was an absolute monster on TSM, your number one trade of the day. And this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to speak confidently when I speak to you guys every single morning about what's on here and what I'm doing and what the trades we're trying to do. So there it is. What's up, Yoda, my guy there? Just shout out uh, right here, as, as this always reminds me of Obi um, as we go. But there it is right here. TSM 145, the number one trade. I said probably Alibaba could have been the number one trade. Have confidence in what you're doing, and then you'll be able to put up numbers. And that's, that's really what it is. Get confident, Bank of Canada interest rate, I think, coming. In right um, now. Right now, so we'll have that dropping for you immediately because, of course, the U.S. market will care a lot about that. Um, Unless overnight, you're trading something dual-listed, you don't care. Right, so nobody cares um, here anyways. Uh, so right now, TSM, um, it looks like it's unchanged, the overnight rate there in Canada, unchanged. So um, we'll, we, we're not getting any movement there. That's no surprise. Uh, there it is, though. What a good out there for TSM. Fire off the hot dog cannon. I mean, I hope you guys can see what's good, man. Here goes SMH back down to the downside. Now, again, give it to us. Geez, shout out to Nimit. Mad appreciation for you as well, um, Nimit. And there it goes. Wow, we are really really on one um and just thanks for watching i hope you guys are enjoying it man i really like the new sean i love it i like to see it and this is what i love talking about too like i'm not gonna lie to you like i'm about one for three today that said it's actually not that bad if i had fought micron i gotta pull up the micron chart for you guys if i fought micron here's the deal it would have eventually worked i could short it all the way back i could load up into it but i'm short here I'm out if it holds above that. And you just gotta be able to do that. Now I just got back of a reload into Apple which took out 168, so we scalped Apple for 35 cents and then it took out the low. So stay disciplined, that's what it's all about. I don't feel I need to change anything if you already have like internal discipline. But I'm back into Intel as well as the market comes back in here. I did miss a chance, look I wanted ARM at 127. You can obviously see that ARM did not get to 127. So I'm looking for the place. I thought I was patiently waiting for, it, for an ad, but it looks as if I'm going to have to try to get it inside of the range as opposed to getting those tops. So I'm going to stay with it uh, on arm. It might be the wrong call, but I, like, I prefer in a move like that to short something that never broke out because to me that means it wasn't as strong as everything else. So I, that to me is going to be arm. Just double check. Tesla, I've canceled my order. Tesla's not breaking that uh, that 147 or 175 level it looks like. I do want to have it if it gets back, but once you travel a good two, three dollars away from a breakout price, the last thing I ever want to do is leave that order in because I feel as if then you'll get it as a surprise and that's not the way you want it. If it goes up four dollars in a row, I don't want to be punching the top in that move. Suddenly you're looking at that bottom of 171 on Tesla. Orders in for Rivian, it's not there yet at ten dollars, but this is exactly the range I did not want to trade Tesla in. I wanted to trade it outside of this 170 to 1 to 175 range. Once it breaks out, I'm taking it and I don't care which direction. It's feeling like it could be that short. All right, um, we're, uh, it's 9.48. It's pretty good, uh, so far so good here. Uh, all right, what do you guys wanna look at? You're welcome, Rob. I mean, thank you to everybody, honestly. Thank you to Nimit, thank you to Rob, thank you to everybody there in the chat. I mean, like we said, you know, Trading is not easy, as you guys can clearly see here. It's just sometimes when you're doing stuff, it's making sense to you, and you got to just keep on doing it. Like that TSM out, you know, right there at, it's just levels, just playing levels. So it's the number one trade idea, it's playing levels. Alibaba, the same thing again. You know, it's, it is, it's just taking that 74, getting up to 75 again. We still have a piece of this one, uh, but it's just giving those opportunities every day in this market, which is why it's just such, honestly, a blessing to be able to be here every day for you. I, I tell that to you, and it sounds like a joke, but I'm, I'm serious. Like, being able to be here, to be able to trade, provide, do all this kind of stuff, I mean, it's really nice. Um, but it's also nice to see 
a different market every day. And today, we're getting one that's pulling back in. And we are bounced off that 18,000. That's why we did a little bit of a higher look um, earlier about what to expect with this market. Down to 18,000, up to 18,400. That's been the range. We've actually pulled back for you guys. Uh, there it is. What's up, Sebastian? Thank you so much again for that. Yeah. That's what it's about. That's why we're doing this. We have the a more Trader TV live station there as well. You can see our positions. You could ask us at any minute what's up with anything that we've been trading. So I just want to thank everybody for all their continued support, man. And we're just going to keep on doing it every single day. SMH dealing with itself right here. AMD probably a short. We did put down AMD here that we wanted 170 short. It does go up to that 169. We left it alone. We probably should not have. So uh, mistake number one, not shorting AMD. But we don't have any other mistakes, man. We're three for three, and they're all absolute monsters. So um, again, congratulations to everybody. Stay with us. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Let's just keep doing our best. That's all you can ever do as a trader. I mean, at the end of the day, right? Like, whatever is a good day for you, bad day for you in between. You're absolutely right, Timon. I might, I might get Rivian at 10. Um, but the thing about that trade is a breakdown doesn't happen until it's actually at $10. So, like I said, the order's in. I'm probably going to get 99s. It, fading into it actually isn't completely ridiculous. And if I did, it would be a VWAP trade at this point because it's 950. That's when I start to think about range bound. And if it's trend down, then, then it sets up for me perfectly. 1030 would be VWAP. And then you got a high here of like 1040. So you're risking not a heck of a lot to play it back in. So it's either a 10 break or I can find that trend. Uh, by the way, Tilray is day two SSR. It's back to the $2. I am looking for an SSR bounce there, but I hadn't looked at it till two minutes ago. Adara? Marin Software here trying to break out of this earlier range. This one announcing that they're upgrading their integration with Microsoft Advertising. So they're getting a move up over 100% today. M-R-I-N, guys. Yeah, we were just saying there's so many good trades no, no, got the open. Something else. Oh, something else. No, I'm just saying in general. I mean, no matter what you're trading, man, you had so many good opportunities at the open. And that's what Neil was talking about. Trading is also about getting the right opportunities at the right time and being able to execute against them. A hundred percent. Like, that's, that's so important, guys. Um, all right, so AMD 169. We could try that. It is making that move back to the upside right now. We did already, like a boss, get in and out of. We have the top and the bottom for TSM today. I mean, this, we have the top and the bottoms. The, let's call it right bottoms and then the tops there for this. Um, so that's been pretty good. I'm gonna wait for 169.50 or so, oops, sorry, I'm on the wrong stock, for AMD to come in. Um, okay, so it just did right there. I'm not oh, trying to play too much around with this, man. Uh, we are short right here, right now. We'll take something out if it dips in, we're short, all right. Oh, wow. I mean, right there, nice little move. We're short at 169.40. We'll take something out in the teens there uh, as it just drops in again for us. So maybe this is some kind of a top. But again, we wrote down 170. So let's try to be a little bit patient and see if we can get something up there and then get stopped out if we get real aggressive in and above that 170 marker. So um, just a little bit of a level there. We'll see if we can respect it on and on AMD. So um, it, that's also probably doing something with NVIDIA, right? 100% um, is doing something to NVIDIA. NVIDIA's now, now at 68. Now remember, it was 875, where NVIDIA was 24 hours ago at the open, 23 and a half hours ago. So this is pretty much it. Like the Alamo to me is at 875 level. If it breaks 870, I'm not looking for a long break. I'm looking for a failed breakout at this high. If I see months, I could, I should probably take multiple shots at this and be willing to take multiple shots. So maybe like a smaller position in front of 70 would be one way to go about it. And then if it breaks, do a little something else. So I'm gonna go with that one as, oh, I just got, I got into Tilray as well. So remember Tilray, uh, day two SSR play. If it, gets if it gets underneath 70, it's like 97, I'm jumping out of that one. Oh, man. I mean, let's see if AMD can get down again. We just got another fill on AMD in the teens. So it's happening again here today. We did reshort SMH, but let's just wait to see if this one is the one that really wants to get going. I'll put SMH up on another screen here just to see. So we just shorted that again. It came back into our level. We got out of two thirds of that. So we'll put another piece back on 222.50 and change. I mean, we can just sort of scalp this out. Like I said, we're just trying to put up something here, see if we can like get a little carried away with some of these shorts. I'm not 100% sure. 
if this is the short today or not. It seems like we're trying to battle back. That 18-2 has been a sticky point for us, uh, as we've discussed this. Here it comes. So here comes SMH. Our target out is still 224. So we are starting to get up to the upside right now in all of these markets. So just watch out. We've still got Alibaba long. We do have SMH short. Um, but here we go. That's 18.2 coming in like crazy right now. These are some good levels. 18.226, maybe you want to hold out for, but the market is starting to get to the upside. We have more SMH shares now. Our average price is 76. So right now we are flat on SMH. Let's just take, we just took out a 69 there. Let's put something in the 50s. If we do get a push down on SMH, we'll be pretty happy with that. But right now, um, it is starting to get up to the highs. There it is. So look, there it is. Okay, so it'll break. So SMH breaks right there through that high as the market gets going a little bit. Um, look, it's coming back in. I'm already on AMD right now. Here comes so, the idiot. Yeah, here comes everything. It's just roaring right back. Wow, you cannot keep this market down for very long, uh, as it seems like. So SMH will turn that around, uh, get out there at 224. I'm still thinking about getting back in, but AMD is the one that's here near 50 and having a little bit of a problem. So let's put on another little piece here in the mid 40s um, and then still wait for that 170. Oh no, so SMH oh, no way. Um, all the way back in just a little bit. Let's take this against 224.25 or so. It just got a little extended there. We're back in SMH. And yeah, what a win that is. Uh, NVIDIA just, it just tagged it. I was sitting there, I had an order above Ugh. for the breakout, and it just tagged 50s and came right back in. So 50s there's, again. So no, 69.50. Oh, 69.50. No, 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 no. Okay, 59.50. Okay, okay. So it was right there. It was for sure, I mean, I, I say for sure, but it didn't break. Uh, so it hasn't broken 870 just yet. I'm going to go for a small position in front of it. Although with the resistance, now it's not even giving it to you. Probably the only chance is to get something in the 20s or even at the evens just to be able to get into this. Because this could, like I said, 875 is the Alamo on NVIDIA. So I want to give it some kind of a chance for a fail breakdown. VWAP is now at 850 is one way to think about it. You got $15 to VWAP on NVIDIA. Intel's still holding flat. Yeah, ARM is now at that resistance level from yesterday in the afternoon. So I have both of these off of pretty big levels. Tilray hasn't moved. Uh, I'm still long at, I have O2s to the long and it's at O2. So as long as it can hold on to that $2 level, I think we're gonna be uh, okay there. Uh, Amazon, where is, I wanna go back to that. Yeah, Amazon actually held 185. I probably got away from this a little bit early. It's a lower high. This does make some sense. I should be back to this well. Let's see it maybe retest 185 up here and I'll look for a short off the 185 level. But obviously Nvidia, when you're in Nvidia, your first concern is Nvidia. Uh, so we saw this 875 yesterday. We're gonna give it some room. I was looking for a failed breakout above 870 to pull back in with VWAP being so far away uh, here. Uh, we totally forgot about Roblox but I'm not gonna be looking at that. So shout out to you, uh, Classy Kent. Roblox is relatively strong. They had that advertising news. Uh, I'm gonna assume it's gonna continue to go with the rest of the market as well. Uh, wholesale inventory is coming up at 10 a.m., so we're going to get that in just a couple minutes here as we just continue to sort of watch out what's going on. SMH does, uh, guys, take out that high. So SMH goes one more time uh, through that level of 224. So completely... Um, not the right play to be short this market. We thought it was. Now we have numbers coming. I mean, we just, you just talked about NVIDIA, so to talk about all this. Um, and we are getting closer. We're just short on AMD right now. We're trying to work this up. I, I want it to get up into 170, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. That was like my next area to really start to load some shares in on. So um, that's a little bit of a level there for me. Let's see if it hits at some point here with um, AMD, but here it comes back in. I still want to get into SMH, man. The damage isn't that much because we had this early win, but we are going to turn red on that name. So we will slap a red name on the board. Um, so yes, human is uh, what we are. And today that is going to be a red name, but look what's happening right now. Let's see if we can get a little bit of revenge in the semis right now with AMD short uh, right now with a nice play. Did you say you were short NVIDIA? Um, it's starting to now pull back. So, so far so good it's here. It's still right here. All right, and all right, it's right. still at 70-ish. Uh, so like 69 bottoms, 71 top. I'm short arm at 60, uh, 26 and a half. It's at 27. So it's still holding the high end of the range. So we are short a couple of chip names in here. And the NASDAQ you, you, you've been able to see SMH with Sean. So the NASDAQ is right at pretty much afternoon support, like 18.2. So if we're going to turn, I mean, 
this would be the spot. Because if we don't, if the, if the NASDAQ doesn't hold here, the next stop up is like 120 points. And I can promise you this, we're not pro if it goes 120 points up, we're not still in these two shorts. I see absolutely no path to success there. So, I mean, NVIDIA never even, it, like, I think 71's a high. Sorry about this, Wick. But 71 in here is about that high. So it didn't get close to that 74, 75. If it pops down in, I got to be thinking VWAP to 60s. Uh, we never really got any other shares in there because it never got to 875. Intel's going to probably test the lows. If it oh. does, I'm going to jump out of it. But uh, we're about two in the money on NVIDIA. Nice. And looking nice. for a little more than that. I got to think this should be an 860 play. If anything, if we're going to pull back here, I think it should be 860. A Amazon was the other name I, I promised you guys if it got back to 85, or I promised myself. If it fails 85, I want to be short back in. It's just too big of a flat bottom to not look for that opportunity oh. on uh, Amazon as we're going to Adara. It hasn't disconnected yet. Did get that uh, those inflation numbers out today with regards to CPI. Now we're waiting on wholesale inventories month over month, expected to come in at 10 a.m. Previous number for this negative 0.2 percent consensus and forecast both coming in positive 0.5 uh, percent. So let's see what number we get here for these wholesale inventories month over month. Uh, for now, quickly we'll just take a. Oh, I think we just got the number in there. Perfect. 0.5 is coming exactly in line here with the consensus and the forecast. Earlier today, we did get that higher than expected CPI print. Right now, though. Um, the SPY trying to recover a little bit from that fall we had right at 8.30, seeing some higher highs and higher lows here for the S&P 500. Names to keep an eye on today include Roblox, RBLX. This one announcing that it's uh, tapped this ad technology firm in order to help work on its video ads for its platform. We also have Boeing here on watch down about 1.5% here, getting some price target downgrades today after yesterday hearing that there might be some investigations into it 787 so more bad news for boeing brings this one to the downside lots of names to keep an eye on guys um all right so by the way if we just never got stopped out of smh what are you supposed to do there's another dollar uh club member right there for amd um and just another monster monster here it's too bad because we do have one red mark on our day and that's smh and um that sucks, but uh, so far so good. Oh, Alibaba's actually just pulled back in. We just got a fill down there uh, on Alibaba. So Alibaba coming into 74. What's up with that? Is it uh, oh, no, nice man. move down inside for Alibaba. We are now long at tens. So we'll see if we can get something out if it does want to climb back up to the upside here for Alibaba. I mean, okay. All right, so this is the level that we wanted. So let's see if Alibaba can hold. I mean, um, where is the problem? I thought 73.50, so. We've already sort of got this. We, are, we, we only were holding 20% or 25%, sorry, out three times. Um, now we'll put that back on. And again, not a huge position. Um, I was still looking at 73.50. We did like Alibaba down here at 74. So let's try that. But this fall back in is a little bit strange uh, for me on that one. But honestly, guys, um, this is what it is today. Uh, I don't know if you got back in there with NVIDIA or not. Well, I'm, I'm still in it. You're still in it. Okay, so... Uh, it's at 66. Oh, I have a stuck word. Okay, no, it's at 66 half uh, there. I just had... Oh, just slow printing NASDAQ sometimes. So it's looking like it's trending back into that 60. It's, it's very strong relatively. I just got some out on ARM. ARM's back down to 126. But even that, like, it's an upward trend, and you're seeing some bids pop in there. The NASDAQ's clearly at resistance. You'd think we'd be able to get... Uh, better move. If it cracks 165, I put a trailing stop go, on go, go, go. Uh, in here. So if it gets through 65, I don't want it back up through $865. Oh, yeah, Tilray. Uh, not to forget about stay off the weed. Well, okay, in this case, stay on the weed. Uh, Tilray holding the $2 level. I just got filled at 6. I got filled at 6 without my midpoint getting filled. Well, that's an idiot, whoever filled me there. Uh, I want to get 8s, 10s, 11s, and if it breaks 15s, I want something in front of 20. Now NVIDIA has cracked that 850 level, so I'm just gonna adjust my order and trail it back to 865, uh, looking for that 860 print. All right. Um, thank you, Randy, for the reload. Yes, thank you. You keep, you keep missing the guy. I keep calling him, I called him, he comes like Batman there, he put the signal out, the guy comes. Thank you so much, Randy, you the man, uh, right there for sure. So. I needed it, I had, I, I'll, t I'll say it later, but I had a, it was a rough night in the, in the Roberts household. Uh, my daughter had a, a, a big fall um, at the pool yesterday, and uh, she's tough. She's tough, but uh, it was a rough night. I was like, I was kind of emotional about it. Oh, so I, didn't you hear me just say this didn't just disconnect all morning? 
Mm. Well, that's good. I'm glad that she's feeling better. Yeah, I got no, about... No, she's good. It was just, you know, she banged up her shoulder and her elbow and her, and her hip and all that stuff. But she's good. She's, I mean, seven-year-olds are tough, man. She has the kneel swimming ability or no? No, she slipped on the... <laughs> she's actually good at swimming? No, she <laughs> slipped. No, she actually slipped. She wasn't even running. She slipped uh, no. on the deck. Well, that's the problem. And it's like, what can you, she was yeah. not running. I couldn't even be mad. She was not running on the deck. Yeah, yeah, that, that happens. I got about four or five hours of sleep. I'm not getting much sleep these days either, so I don't know. We'll have to get see what's down. Going. Uh, with that, yeah, let's get down. Is damn right, well, right. Except for Tilray. Uh, about that one. Look at this, man, Alibaba. Um, we just got a nice little fill down there, so we are now long at 73.80s uh, on Alibaba. Let's see if that can do something here uh, back in. So Alibaba, nice little trade so far, as we did get a little bit of a reload uh, back down there right now. So so far so good here uh, as we continue to go. So. All good, all good um, on this market. But what a good trade there for AMD. It's too bad about SMH because that is really, really tanking uh, back in. PL number one here today will be uh, for the show, will be AMD. Maybe I, I know you're in uh, NVIDIA. We'll see if I can overtake that. TSM right now, as well, is a big stock for us here, as is Alibaba. Oh, I just jumped out, and maybe, maybe it's a trap well, or a trick in this case, but uh, NVIDIA flashed. Right at this level, 863, it sort of flashed a buyer in there. Uh, so I jumped out, and sometimes I ask the question, if I was flat, what would I do? If I was flat and thinking long, I'd be considering dips into the higher low. So we'll see if we're right about it. Uh, Arm is the other one that we're in. Wanted to give that a bit more breadth, but we had to take the, we took the L on the consolidation short in Arm. And this is what happened. We had Micron on the upside, took the L on that one. Uh, we had Amazon, we took the L on, not back into Amazon yet, uh, but we waited for ARM to get up in here. It never really tested that high. We grabbed the 27 area in front. Now it's getting back into VWAP. So I want to see 125 and then lower. Uh, I just feel like the way that ARM reversed yesterday, I mean, yesterday it did a breakout at the open and then dropped $10. So I feel like ARM to be able to get to 123 is only four bucks and we should be able to capture that. Uh, just checking back in for you guys with Tilray. I feel like this has a chance, if it can just do the range, all I want is yesterday's range. You give me back into yesterday's range and I'm a happy camper. Hold two and get to $2.25 and that'll be enough for me. So I'm kind of surprised that uh, nobody sort of recognized this here today, but I'm gonna give a big shout out to the International Day of Pink. I mean, I'm wearing this. So right here, this is a day, this means a lot um, to me because we have kids in school, obviously, and I think it's pretty important. Against bullying, discrimination, all of that, it's the International Day of Pink. So from me to you guys and from everybody here at uh, Trader TV Live and Real Trading, um, you know, we're, we're representing, we're showing up for everybody here today, International Day of Pink. So there it is, man, again, against all of that diversity. So let's just support International Day of Pink. Shout out uh, to everybody out there. So we've got you. We've also got you right here as well, as far as Alibaba is concerned, because there it is again. It's another 40 cents back in for Alibaba. So good trading here for that one. Um, again, we really like this trade. We've liked it for a hot minute here on Alibaba. We bought that dip. We talked about wanting to get long at 73.50. So of course we're gonna take a 75 uh, fill, right? So that's a good little level there. And there goes Alibaba right back up into some of these levels that we like one more time. So again, there it is, man, um, as we go. So nice trading so far. And yeah, thanks for everybody uh, there. Yeah, it's kind of like salmon-ish, you know, salmon pinkish uh, right there. But a big shout out. Um, thanks for all, all the recognition there. And uh, we'll just keep on being what we're being around here, man. And uh, well, there it is. Okay, so here it is. A nice move up there for Alibaba as we continue to do damage on this name. Let's take something out at 25. This has been one of these days, man. Like we said, good karma follows you around. And right now, we've got a little bit of that mojo happening here uh, for us. So good so far. Um, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. We are really starting to put some damage in, in, in these boards up. $1.25 in the money on AMD and another 50 cents in the money for um, Alibaba. Yeah, so as, look, I mentioned I got out of, uh, I'm holding it, look, I'm gonna hold on to ARM for reasons stated, but we did jump out of NVIDIA and there's still some buying going on at that 863. I saw someone in the chat saying, uh, get out, I'm going long NVIDIA. And I think it's not, like, if you look at the pattern, it actually isn't ridiculous. Sorry about that wick, it never got to 940. If you're long, for your sake, I hope it gets there, but I'm not taking it. Amazon was the one 
and it's right here retesting the 185. So I need to see it fail this price because suddenly it's looking a little bit stronger than it was. But if it fails out here at 185, I would be jumping into a short underneath. Uh, Tilray just gave another fill holding out. I'm long at twos, it's at seven. My next offer I think is nines and then 11s. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Copy care team, good luck to you. Uh, Pfizer is a long. That's not the one I was gonna talk about. It was actually gonna be the pullback that's happening in Moderna. Boo to you, Moderna. Uh, but this was a big, big rally yesterday. 105. I mean, if it was a level yesterday, it could be one uh, here today. But we didn't mention this at all. I did mention XOM. I'm probably about to go cancel my bids now on XOM. XOM's taking out the high. So I was bidding in front of 120. It looks like in all of that mess, I might have missed getting filled by about 30 cents or so on XOM on the dip buy. But I was clearly preoccupied with a bunch of chip names at the time. I wasn't even looking at a level two of XOM. But if you got this one to the long side, congratulations. Now it just looks like it's going to break out 122. And I'm sitting here waiting for fills at 120.50. So yeah, part of, part of uh, what we do around here is plan our trades, be risk you know, risk managers. And, and shout out to Brian Shannon, who was on the show yesterday. Uh, we talked all about exactly that. And I mean, look at, look, you want to talk about planning trades. I mean, TSM, like I was going to say, Alibaba, and AMD. These are, right now, I'll check, I think NVIDIA might be in there as well, uh, three of the top four names. And these are the only names I've traded. And then I also have what I'll have to look again, but SMH could be the biggest loser as well. So we do have a couple of the biggest winners and then we have SMH and that's what's gonna happen. You know, like I said, be confident in your trading. I was confident in SMH, but it did take out those levels. It got right back into that pre-market. We should have done a little bit better on that level there, but unfortunately, we just wind up getting out a little bit too early there at 224. We could have held it to 224.50, but like I said, that's been something that I have to deal with is like trying to figure out what the right amount of share size is so that I'm not gonna punch out. Um, but again, punching out saves a lot of money. And uh, it's done that for me very, very frequently. Uh, all right, so here comes AMD. I am bidding right here at that bottom one more time to see if we can get a 168.30, I think I'm at. Yeah, so 168.30. We're there right now. We'll see if, well, it already is. We might as well hit this because we like it to, and why not? Um, there it is. So there's the dollar, and there it is again right there. Face slap it out. So there it is. Now officially, AMD, Alibaba, and Taiwan Semi. Right there, three trades. We have three trades on, they're all sticky notes. You can find it at Trader TV. Sean, go back and look over the last couple days uh, for them as well and do some work on that one. Shout out to CompuCare team. Um, shout out to Mr. Long Shorts there. Um, yeah, so again, yeah, anybody that's, I mean, that's why we're doing this. That's why we're, we're, we're wearing, it's not why we're wearing it. I like the shirt too, but we are wearing it today for that. So again, a big shout out um, to all the dads, parents, everybody out there celebrating. Uh, today, that's very, very important. So yeah, you get that laid out the night before, like we did the same thing in our household. Well, she watch. Well, yes, she picks her. She picks her pink shirt now. She has a couple of them. Uh, I think it's important. When I were, when we were in high school, we had a really cool uh, club called Students for Students, which was all about that. And you know, I was like, it's just one of those things where, you know, ultimately, uh, I've even seen it on the trading floor. But uh, supporting each other is what it's all about in the in the bigger sense. But uh, when we're supporting each other, that means we got to be listening to some other ideas that are out there. And it, was, it came by, I don't even think I was looking at Roblox. It was on the watch list, but there are a few people that have even now just said, hey, man, what's going on with Roblox? I don't think we should be ignoring this one. That $40 level, it's now held. So like, this is, look at the open, like, look at the heartbeat on this thing. I mean, it's up at 4080, it's back down to 3096 after the number, and then it's back and forth. Now, suddenly, you have some stability above the $40 level on Roblox. It's, the 50 period on the daily is also 40 bucks, so you have a lot of confluence. I feel like I'm just using that word way too much, and uh, thank you, Obi, and everybody for that. But, but it's true. No, but it's true. Like, you're looking for multiple reasons to like level. It's also the 50 period. So $40 is starting to hold. I want the long off of this. Um, I am short still in arm. My next bid is at 125, probably in the 20s. Let me just double check that. Yeah. And it's at 50. So one more push and we get our second fill there. Head out. But I want this long on Roblox. Uh, so good news from them in the ad with respect to ads. Tilray is very slowly gliding higher which is what it does to $2 stock. Like it's just going station to station here. Now it's consolidating at five bucks. 
I have one offer at, well, I said eight, uh, nine, but it looks like it's at eight. And then I'm offering here at 11, which is the afternoon high uh, yesterday on Tilray. This is a day two. They reported uh, earnings with a big miss, actually. They were down like 20 something percent. Yeah, they were down. I think it was 20, nasty. yeah, 20 exactly or something like that. Yeah, not in Well, actually, was, uh, I think it was nice more than that. To be for, uh, I don't know. Uh, not a nice day for Tilray uh, yesterday for sure. Not a nice day any day for cannabis names, really. We did have a nice run in them, but again, very, very news based stuff there in Can I Bus. Um, yes, you can. All right. Uh, all right. Yes, 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 you can. Uh, right now. Um, all right, so there it is right now. Nice move back up to the upside. I'm here all day, ladies and gentlemen. Besides the morning, or besides the afternoon, when you will have both Adara and Sharif, uh, who's around here somewhere, um, he will be here this afternoon. Um, okay, so there it is, $1.70 now in the money as we have a bunch of fun here one more time with you. Alibaba now, 70 cents in the... I mean, Travolta's like, hey, man, what exactly is going on here uh, right now? Are these even real fills? Uh, but you guys can see that that's exactly what's up uh, right here on the day. One more time. Um, it's been a good one, nevertheless. SMH, though, has been the bad one for me. But let's move off of that and go to something else. We've been looking at Meta for a minute um, recently. We had that great 519 call yesterday. We did not take it. That's kind of been the high today, 520 or so there for Meta. Um, nice movement up and down here today. 505, wow, okay. We got real low on a lot of these names, man. 505? Yep. Um, and now you're right back into 520, a possible short area. What is the market? So the market's trying to fall down in. We almost have one and two dollars right now on AMD. Um, we are taking some more out on Alibaba potentially right here as the market is getting a little weaker now. Let's take one more piece out on Alibaba if we can get it. Um, and then we'll just kind of do the magic that, there it is. We'll just kind of do the magic that we've been doing. Looking for good levels to trade off of. So, um, yeah. Super chat. I didn't see what your super uh, chat I, was. I, I just found it. I, I scrolled for it. Thank you for putting it back in there. And shout out to Bears versus Bulls, who's actually uh, constantly making sure we don't miss it. Shout yes. out to UT Money. Um, and blessings to you as well. Uh, appreciate that. We don't ask for the super chats. As a matter of fact, the only thing that we do ask from time to time is if you're enjoying this bad boy. I pity the fool that doesn't hit the like and subscribe button. And I'm not going to say what you said that gave me the idea for the next one I'm going to shoot. But in the last 20 minutes, 100%, you, you said something. And I'm going to shoot a new one based on that theme. But you're not, it's, you guys won't figure it out. But I'm going to get Fabian. Uh, Fabian's on the ones and twos by himself. So once Ramin is back, probably needs a little more time. Uh, we're going to shoot some more new ones uh, for those. Mr. T's getting kind of played. Yeah, I don't think we use it that much, but uh, I do pity that GIF, that is for sure. Um, okay, so what's up, Nicola? Yeah, the number one, shout out to what we talked about yesterday, the number one EV name, check this out. We brought this to you guys yesterday. We're still just, I mean, we are stone cold chilling right here today, guys, so we'll just continue to do that. Um, but uh, we do have an update, man. The trophy has been taken away, and I'm just gonna hit this and leave it at that for now. Um, all right, so right here, uh, there's us leaving yesterday. We thought we were pretty cool there. Um, and then this is what I was looking for right here. The EV performance uh, right now of the year is our friend Nicola. So Nicola, congratulations, man. You are the EV champion that we all thought you were. Uh, up 25% year to date there for Nicola. Everything else is red. So there's not another green EV name this year. Uh, the worst, of course, is Fisker. We've already talked about that to death. Rivian, maybe. Neo, maybe. Xpeng, Lucid, Pulsar. Any of these names could be following uh, some of these names. Or they could maybe be really producing like Nikola and get back up to 25%. I think it's just... I say this all tongue-in-cheek because a lot of it is obviously where the stock has come from and where it is, yeah. uh, but it's just sad state more about the status and the state of some of these EV names. And, and we've really um, ignored them uh, the last couple of days, I feel like, trading. But Tesla, I can go back. I should probably oh, do yeah. this. Rivian. We give you guys, like, useless things all the time. We should probably actually tell you names that we're positive and, and negative on. And I actually think that Tesla has been a pretty good stock. I just... I, I get the feeling like NVIDIA and Amazon might be my number one stock over the last little while, but Tesla's really been traded well as well. We just haven't gotten it in the last couple of days. I was waiting for 170. That didn't really come in there. 
Um, if we're going to look at a longer time frame here and maybe zoom this in or out a little bit more. So there's the bounce. I guess 170 was probably a little bit too shallow. We could have taken the 200 period there at 170.75. But I was really thinking that 170, just psychologically, we've talked about sort of being in the middle here with Tesla and not much actually going on. So 169-ish, 170 or so there for Tesla would still be my area. And then... I don't really want to short this name. I actually want to break through 180 and take that trade. But I think if we can get anywhere near, maybe even this 50 period at 175 right now, we do have a little bit of resistance up here in 175, 174. And that was proven a little bit there. I don't know if we actually spiked up to that. Uh, yeah, I guess we did. So 174, 175. Yeah, I think we like that short. So if the market gets going, I think I like that level there on Tesla. I was about to say, I. I I still like the short on Rivian, but that's at 10, I would say, yeah, 1030 into 1035, which it's about to get to right now. So it's kind of an interesting coincidence that you mentioned that at the exact moment I wanted to get it. I took a tighter stop short trade on Amazon. We took one shot at it here for about 50 cents. Wow, this time we risk a little bit less than that, but it's a stronger stock in the moment. So... I feel, I feel okay with a tighter stop in that situation. It's a much stronger stock going into that level as it's about 1020. But if we do wick this, I want to be able to take a couple of shots here underneath like that whole red to green moment, which would be at 186. Uh, but as far as Rivian goes, as I just mentioned, yeah, I want, I'd rather be into here. So if it breaks 30 and holds above VWAP, I think VWAP doesn't matter to me as much as the consolidation underneath 1040 and wanting to short the top end of it. Arm is holding at 125.50, so it's about a buck in the money. Tilray's still at like that 6-7 range. Uh, NVIDIA, which we got out of, is right back. So the buying was relentless at 863 bucks on NVIDIA. And sorry, it, like, this chart would look much more impressive to the upside if not for this wick here. But uh, that's $40 that NVIDIA moved. So the fact that it even pulled back oh, wow, 5 yeah. or 6 dollars at this point looks pretty good. It's about to retake that top. If it breaks out the high, I'd wait for 75 before I think about shorting this again. Very much to the downside here is the IWM Russell 2000 trying to curl back up here but still down more than 2% on the day as of right now. Lots of small cap runners though on the horizon today, including Marin Software, one of the strongest here, up over 150%. With a strong catalyst too, announcing some upgrades to its Microsoft advertising integration. So nice uh, mega cap connection here, sending MRIN to the upside. We also have here a, a nice look here for ADIL Pharmaceuticals, ADIL. This one now up about 70%, announcing some positive data for its alcohol use disorder treatment. Last but not least, no catalyst on this one that I could find, but InfoBird, IFBD, some decent attention on social media, and a float of about 1.34 million shares. This one has run in the past. And today, IFBD running again, guys. All right, um, we are now almost $2. The, the, the chip names are really coming in a little bit here uh, for sure. Oh, sorry, we're on ACB. By the way, Aurora Cannabis is ripping right now up to 720. But we are now almost $2 in again on, here, let's, oh, well, come on AMD. Uh, almost $2 in as we just touched that bottom again at 167.50. So watch out now, uh, as we say uh, here for AMD potentially breaking this damn bottom. I'm, st I'm not... I'm not going to let this one go. I want to get some, I want to get this back. It's not, I just, I really like trading SMH and TQs. You guys saw me hit those futures yesterday. It was absolutely monstrous. I think we want to do this again. Um, CGC and ACB both really popping right now as we get the weed Batman back into the building here. And you could spark one up if you're long these names because it is worth celebrating today. Up 5%. Up right now, 5% for CGC. Up, I think it was 11% or so for ACB. Uh, 12 now starting to go through that $4. $4. Through that $7 mark now goes Aurora Cannabis. Um, but uh, yeah, nice movement again on this spot. So watch out for MSOS. We've talked about some of the weed space names here. Hard to trade. I don't know if they're hard to trade or not, but this is a little more steady if you're looking for investments. But if you're looking, MS, MSOS, not X. Uh, right there. So MSOS is the name you're looking for. A little more steady on the daily chart, as you're going to see. But again, 
not the movement that you're going to experience in those actual equity exactly, names yeah. that have huge short floats. That um, plays both ways though. Yep, and, and definitely plays both ways. Um, and what doesn't play both ways is AMD. It's only playing one way, short, right now. Look at this trade. You wanna talk about an execution like Bret Hart over here. You're, I mean, up at 170, this is the level that we wanted. We, we have it, we're holding on to it. We do only have that 10% left, but still we're putting up numbers. AMD will go PL one. So that's it, man. We waited for that. Look, my best stock and the best stock on the show today, 169, we waited for it till 953. So this is part of what it's about. Um, you know, making those trades, being able to hit them when they're there. And I don't know. I mean, you can also get blown out if you hold too many shares for a long time. We talked about that with the SMH. So um, things got to go your way, but when they do, it's good. And, you know, ride the wave. Like we say, man, if you've got that hot hand, just keep doing it. Keep seeing the charts the way you are, um, and hopefully you'll be able to uh, continuously print. I'm thinking about a 168 out, maybe here on AMD. But the problem with me is, as we all know, we have these trades, and then we get out, and then they just rip up like the rest of the day, and I'm like, wah, wah. So, you know, we got out of TSM for $1.50. At the time, we had the bottom and the top, but we got out of it, and now we don't have this long anymore. So I'm thinking about the same type of feels here for AMD. If this market really does crack lower, I mean, we may not get a reload. Like I want this to get down into 166.50, 166. So if I just get out now and then we tank, I'm just not sure where I'm gonna get short again um, unless we get back up into this view up, which if we do that, then that's enough reason just for me to get out and then possibly reload anyways. So this is identical chart here. Just holding a small little thing there. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah I, was wondering, I was wondering if you could have gone. If you exactly, can overlay on this. I know. Way. So here's I the don't thing. Don't know how. No, you can overlay and keep per weight, but if you do the overlay, yeah. it goes to a percentage chart, not the prices. So then it's uh, not really going to look how I know. I know how you want. I, I, when I did it, I couldn't make. Okay, well, go for it, but. Basically, all, all I wanted to say was it's doing the same thing at VWAP, where if it breaks, I think we get the low of the day. But if it doesn't, I don't have a re-entry that sets up the way I like. Now, for me on ARM, I like both shorts. I like the short off of the consolidation bottom, and it did this move to consolidate. It broke up the high, get out, and then short it again off of this level. I, do, I get lazy drawing these, these resistance lines, but you can kind of clearly see this is a little bit under 128. Uh, so I, it's imagine that line's a little bit tighter to that low or at 128 even but yeah I, I like that resistance level i tend to take like a couple of swings at it get to stop out and wait for the next level up but i do think we have an opportunity uh so thank you to acb and cgc for being good um and thank you to tilray for being ssr because it's short sell restricted all i wanted to see was it regain the two dollar level once it did so i took the first available dip which was ones and twos it's now, it just filled, I just filled at 12. I have another offer in here in front of 15s. If it gets to 225, I will be out of everything. Although I just realized I don't even have an offer out there in front of 225. I'm gonna get one out in front of 217 uh, as well. So stay on the, oh, I'm on the wrong page. I was gonna hit this one. Or possibly this one uh, as well. Although yeah. I don't really, you know, in the old age, not so much anymore, but uh, yeah, big moves to the upside. Tilray was down 20 some odd percent. It is SSR. I think that's the reason why it's getting some carry to the upside. Just means you can't uh, hit the bid to go short when it's short sell restricted unless the last print was an uptick. Sometimes that means you get a relief rally and that's what you're seeing here. All right, cooking up trades uh, is what we're doing today. So what's up to Chef Joe and everybody that's here with us today um, on a day where we're going to be four for five, I guess. No, TSM, Baba, AMD, three for four. Um, again, loser on SMH. So we'll lose pretty much the same on SMH that we'll wind up making on Alibaba, giving us AMD and TSM as our positive names. Yeah, this is, so I did overlay it. Um, I think it's fine. It's, it's, it does show both of them as percentages, yeah. but there's the chart. So yeah, you know, nice move up, nice move back down. I could change these into lines, which might look a little bit better. I think, yeah, the line might be easier. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Okay. That's the, the point. 
The problem is now the hell, how the heck do I get out of this? Uh, all right, so maybe if I just switch. I talk. didn't want to do it on my show chart because I was like, yeah, if I screw, right. yeah. yeah, I just have to get rid of it. No, it's okay. Yeah. I'm no, it's all good. Um, um, all right, so AMD still dollar fifty and Baba fifty cents. I'm just gonna clear, clean this up. I wanted to just quickly jump over there to it is. Nvidia. It's pretty easy. Like it would be, it's so, it's very tempting when you hit something to want to go back and. And, and go back into the same well, but it's not really setting. And this is the good thing about trading. You don't ha you're not forced into a trailer. Just because it went well doesn't mean I, I need to go back into this well. It's gliding higher low, no test of the good price up there above, at 870 and above, uh, no real retest down at the 850 level. So let it do its thing and just be calm about it. Um, if it does get back up and break those highs, fair enough. And we'll get back over to that. We did not, I don't think we even looked at Google in that 155 level. So Google actually looks pretty weak. And this is, the concern for me with Alphabet would be, if we just got this hot number, and Alphabet just yesterday tagged the 52-week high and turned around, like, is this a name that, on the, like, could it really even have enough strength to retest that high? And it's already relatively weak. And I'm over here on Amazon, did I get back in Amazon? No, I did not. And Amazon looks okay, but Google, oh my God, why didn't we Google's weaker than Amazon. You know, down 0.7 versus 0.5. Amazon retraced all the way back into yesterday's uh, bottoms. I mean, Alphabet, when it pulled back, it did not pull back even close to as much, and it's putting in lower highs. Lower highs, to me, uh, means a trend to the downside. So I'm kind of favoring uh, Google over Amazon and let's find out what's going on in the world of crypto, as we should, with Adara. Yeah, there's an interesting note um, yesterday here. A couple beat Bitcoin ETF issuers, including uh, most notably Jan Van Eck of Van Eck, so the HODL or HODL um, Bitcoin ETF, saying that they think that SEC is likely to reject um, Ethereum-related ETFs. So, so just some interesting notes there. A little bit of bearishness with regards to the prospect of those Ethereum spot ETFs. In terms of Bitcoin itself here, down now below 69,000. So this is uh, could be the second red day in a row if we continue this move to the downside. Yesterday basically erasing any of the gains that we did make on Monday. So a bit of weakness uh, with BTC continuing to see a little bit of rejection or resistance here at that 70,000 plus level. Right now here, Bitcoin at 68.5, down almost 2%. Ethereum a little bit weaker here, down two and two thirds percent and below that 3,500 level. BNB up about 1% right now here. Solana down about 3%, Ripple down about 3%. A lot of these crypto names weaker rather than stronger with Cardano notably down about 5.5% right now. And we are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with code TTV, capital letters. Use the link in the description to go to checkout. Oh, I just saw, well, as it was on that page, I'm going to, I saw the inflation thing, so it's got to be real. Uh, but uh, Roku and Palantir, Kathy Wood picked up. I hadn't noted that story, but when the market goes down, you know, she picks something up, uh, to be sure. So we just got that 17 print. Thank you very much, Tilray. You're not going to go to the moon, but you can go a little bit back to where you were yesterday. A small fraction of what this stock was able to do um, to the downside, but that's all it takes. Long to... I had 201 half as an average price with a stop underneath 98. So we're going to get 97s out. It's about four and a half cents worth of risk plus the fees for punching out. Once it got to that five to eight range, we start taking out and then we're going to hold in for this high. So it can't go red for me, but we're very close to 225. And once it gets there, I'm out of this stock. Like this is like go here to here and get the you know what out of Dodge, take the money. Uh, and run uh, for Tilray. And uh, it, at that point, like maybe look at if you want to continue, if I want a continuation in the weed names, it would probably be in the ones that were stronger, which is like your ACBs and your um, uh, canopies of the world. All right. I'm going to um, get rid of this symbol. I mean, it would be kind of cool if we were able to, we'll, we'll talk about this in our meetings, but like provide to you guys like what our top symbols are for the month or for the week, P&L wise, that might be cool. So I'm gonna try to do that uh, and figure that out uh, for all of you right there. Um, okay, so look at Uber right now. Um, 
So we just shorted this. So it, it's, it's good so far. I don't know if it's going to be good uh, for very long here, but Uber right now, uh, we did take out a dime. It did go 20 cents into the money for us. I'm waiting out for 75, I think would be a pretty cool little level there um, to see, but that's something to look into. Uber right there, 75 with a little bit of a drop off there underneath VWAP under the market. Um, although the market's battled back, Uber kind of having a little bit of a hard time, but I'm just trying to play it against that 75. So worst case scenario, that would be what that is. Uh, you know, the market's going up now. So we're holding VWAP. It looks like we want to break higher. I mean, the long for Alibaba seems fine, but the shorts now are definitely in question. So AMD just made that move basically into, I mean, if you take away that first move off the open, we, we, we really got into like days low there at 167. 30. We're short at 169.50. So that was $2 and change in the money. So let me just put something down there. If we can get that, let's just grab that at 167.40 right into here. Call it a trade and then just find something infinitely better uh, than that. So we'll see if that can come in right now. But so far, NVIDIA is breaking the high. Like I said, oh, NVIDIA is breaking the high. Okay, so that's good to know. Um, AMD, again, starting to get back to the upside. I still want to short more of it. But like I said, it, it's in here for a reason. We wanted the 170 short. It came up to that level. We shorted it. And it's, like I said, the number one symbol. So, you know, what else are we supposed to do? Just to put on more shares, I guess. But, you know, we're still happy with it. Let's just wait to see what happens now. Uber is really my latest entry into the building. What's TSM doing? 148 at day's high. I mean, damn, you want to talk about a trade. That was sticky note number one uh, today was TSM. Uh, first of all, the podcast. We're going to change the podcast up a little bit, I feel like, so we're going to get ready for that. Um, and then we're also going to um, keep on acknowledging that if you're looking for trade ideas, watch list. Neil has his morning note. Um, and then we also have uh, out right now the sticky note that comes for you every single day. And look at the trades on here. TSM long. I mean, what else are we supposed to do? Uh, Intel, short, didn't come up to 40. I'll look at that again maybe in a minute. Baba long and AMD short. So it's bang, 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 no trade on Intel. So three for three here. Um, and really, it didn't mean 39 on Intel. Shout out, it should have been 40, but yeah, we can look at it at 39 again. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're doing right now. Maybe Disney. I know you're looking at Arm. Arm's been a really good name um, as well. Oh, shoot. Disney. Disney. There Disney was a quickly. trade I was going to... Oh. 117 oh, bottom. Mind, yeah, 116.40. So, again, even on this name, we had sold this name. Um, not all of it, but we got out at 121.50. Remember, we were feeling kind of bad about that. We did get some out at 115 that one time when it ticked up to here, and then it ripped. Um, so we did get something out up here, but we're still in this name. Disney, I still like it. Now there goes AMD. Okay, boom, there it is, your $2 winner right there. John Travolta saying, what's exactly going on over here? So let's just floss that off right there. Grab another uh, $2 winner for us. And we talked about the chip names, man. Number one stocks, weed names, chip names. Trade the names that are actively moving. And that's what we've been doing um, and allowed us to have, like we mentioned already, a pretty good month around here. I wanted, to, I wanted to say something about Disney, but it looks like there was no missed opportunity. But on the daily chart, this is a long consolidation here off of the 116 at the bottom, 119. You can call it 120, but I think it's more interesting if it can even break that 19. So um, it doesn't seem like it's, it has to go another full percentage point. Go green and then go 1% from here to get to 129, but it's worth it. So... You know, sometimes you get sort of caught up when there's so many things to look at and an idea you might have had uh, comes into play a little bit later. Big reversal on Coinbase. Obviously, it's a little bit different at 250 than it was when we sat down this morning. The nature of how it got here, I think, is completely changed. And if I'm going to be patient about this, maybe I should be waiting for the 54 level or the 60 level, or at least play it by ear. It's 1040, this is not the time of day that I want to be rushing back into, or rushing into anything at this particular point. Like either it's, either it's an A plus. The Russians. It's a, like an A plus level if I'm going against the grain, or I want to be joining the trend. And I don't think 250 is not an A plus level. I think 260 is the A plus level and has been on, on Coinbase for a while, as we were mentioning uh, Kathy Wood. <laughs> Uh, selling some shares, and it coincidentally double-topped at 260 when it was noted to sell some shares. Like, the reason I like Amazon is because it's resistance at support, and that's one 
and much like Google or anything in this realm, when you're at those highs, are we really going to be able to punch through those tops? For any of the big cap tech names, it's been an impressive rally, but as long as you're in the pocket underneath some of this resistance, which we still are, technically speaking now, on Amazon at 85, I want to give it that shot. If it breaks out from here, I'd have to wait to 187. So we're going to stick to the three names that we're in, although Tilray, I don't necessarily see an obvious place to add. I had said NVIDIA made a fresh high. Um, you know what? Maybe it... Okay, it might have missed by a couple of cents, but it did break 871 again, and it looks like it wants to break it back out into the upside. If it gets to 875, I'd wait for that. But even Amazon just sort of came out. I've taken three shots at Amazon and have not hit on any of them, but thankfully, like, Tilray will be able to make up for it, and Biddy will be able to make up for it. You just want to make sure that your losing trades are not as big as your winning trades. Because you would have seen me go, like, 0 for 3 or something, but then all three wins have been enough to get you back into that sort of Greenville. And it's not always going to be the way. Sometimes you get like an A-plus trade like in NVIDIA, the 850 breakdown. That's a better trade than the short today was because the breakdown trade just goes instantly in the money. You're not worried. You're, you're not going against the grain. Uh, you are with the trend because the trend was down. The against the grain trades are a little bit trickier. That said, sometimes that's what you're going to be doing. You know, sometimes your levels are going to line up and you might have to go the other way. Uh, you have to give me a hand signal when we're ready for a Dara, guys. My, my earpiece isn't working. But until we get there, the NASDAQ just took out 18.2. So you're now trend to the upside right. in the overall market. Just want to quickly show you. You're now trend to the upside on a 60 minute. But same thing with my 15 minute in here. Like you're now breaking out these tops. Let's go over to Adara for Sector Watch. Some notable weakness here across the board, of course, after that CPI print, but a couple names, uh, a couple sectors sort of keep an eye out in terms of positivity, mainly going to be here energy minerals. We do have a little bit of strength in this one. We did just get those oil change numbers. XOM here uh, leading this group to the upside. It's also a little bit more flat here in, distri uh, in distributor services. So given overall weakness, even a couple flat names here or flat sectors are worth pointing out. Industrial service is also slightly uh, stronger on the day, but lots of weakness here across the board. Utilities, notably red, consumer durables as well, process industries, transportation, health technologies with the exception of Eli Lilly, pretty much all of these to the downside. Finance also continuing this weakness as we head up to bank earnings, kicking off the Q1 earnings season. We're going to get those starting on Friday, so certainly a sector to continue to keep an eye on. Also worth noting NVIDIA, relative strength here in electronic technology and other otherwise red sector. So contrasting what we were seeing earlier today before that CPI number, also weakness across the board here for tech services. So pretty mixed bag here, guys. Hmm. All right, 1040 right now. And if you guys were wondering what was for lunch, let's do it. All right, we did cover that AMD, obviously down there, it's still hovering around the same spot. Alibaba's 40 cents in the money and Uber back in. You know, you grab some Uber Eats. Uh, maybe there, a nice little short there for Uber. Okay, um, wow, how appropriate. On the day that we are wearing pink, happy International Pink Day, as we've already talked about that over and over and over again. Um, shout out to everybody celebrating that today. Um, no. Okay, and Siblings Day, according to the professor, but you did not know it was International Pink Day. Um, I did not know it was Siblings Day. Uh, so here we go. Um, right now, herb crusted salmon filet. There it is. Um, with basil lemon compote, which is nice. Steamed new potatoes and green beans. So I'd say it's a pretty good one. We will slap a chef on that herb crusted salmon filet. Not bad. We'll take that. Nice little move salmon. there. We'll, we'll, we'll take that. I like that. As long as it's not a cold piece of salmon on top of the salad, I'll be happy with it. Um, Alibaba still uh, trying to go upside right there. Absolutely took care of business there on AMD. And again, another, I mean, we keep saying it, another green day, good day over here, nothing to complain about. And uh, you guys can see the trades that we're throwing down. I just hope that you're able to put some trades on your board as well. Absolutely. Look, uh, they're not going to put a, sal a salmon. If we get salmon on the salad, it'll be tomorrow. <laughs> not today. That's just, that's how, I'm not making it up. That's literally how it goes. Although yesterday, um, I thought the salad was pretty good. Like they had, eh, whatever. The it rice was like the nasty. No, the rice was bad. Had. The salad was actually good, you know. But uh, I, there was some kale in it. I'm a big kale. I, I love raw kale. I know that's weird for some people. I get it. Some people really don't like I love raw kale. I can just eat that crap up. And it's good for you too, man. 
Correct. Vegemite's better for you. Oh, you weren't here, Sharif, but uh, actually that Vegemite, we should, throw, we should probably not have that on the desk anymore. Because uh, no one's, I don't think anybody's going to be eating that anytime soon. And, uh, oh, I promised somebody, uh, actually, not I. actually in the chat today, and this got overlooked, I made a comment when we were at the Lowe's. I said, if NVIDIA goes green today, I'd be very shocked. And someone said, you should say, suffering succotash, I was wrong. So I can't do it that way, Fabian. Maybe you can, <laughs> suffering succotash, I was wrong about NVIDIA. NVIDIA is at 871, so it most certainly went green, and it went even further green. I only went short, and it managed to work out on NVIDIA, and I finally got rid of that wick. So now my chart is not ridiculous on NVIDIA. It looks like it wants to break the top. Remember, it was 875 where everything started to fall apart uh, yesterday's trade, just 24 hours ago. It was 875 down to 830. We were back down at 830. Everything was doom and gloom. And look at this thing. Now it's hunting for 875 uh, once again at 1045. I'm in arm right now. So as this gets back into that 127 level, got a decision to make. If it gets up here and tests that 28, like these highs, then do I want to reload it if the market's too screaming to the upside and is continuing to break higher? I might not reload this. There's just no need to at that particular point. But I would wager, you can sort of see the difference between ARM and NVIDIA. ARM was at 135 yesterday at the open, and it's making a lower high. So clearly ARM is a little bit weak relative to um, the leader of the pack when it comes to the chips. All right, we're, um, we're going to go short, if we can, on the leader of the pack. Uh, if we can get this up here at 875, I like that trade. So we're going to try to get that uh, in for us right now on NVIDIA. I'm going to start it in and around here, but that is a target for me, um, 875, to sort of have our average position in and around there. If we can get it for NVIDIA, up that two in a bit. Let's just see if it does want to pull back. I think it's worth the shot. We've put up some big numbers on NVIDIA, and we're going to see if we can do it again uh, right here, right now. So that's what we're going to wait for. It's going to be patient. We have to wait for it. So that's the first thing. Um, so let's do that and wait for for NVIDIA to actually fill out, uh, but needs to get back up to the upside if we're gonna do that. Our only trade, and like I said, it's already been done, AMD. If we can get the short up there, we like that. Our Uber trade is now, again, another one. So let's just keep on hitting those chicken dinner winners. I know it's salmon again today, but um, there's, there's another one. So AMD, one for one. Alibaba, two for two. Uh, SMH, two for three, because we lost on that one. TSM, three for four, uh, right there. And then, boom, right back in, four for five with Uber, waiting to see if we can get a little bit more of a move back down in. So it's been a very tough day, man. Not that many traders. Um, you know, some traders green, but no real big numbers uh, here again today. So just stay with it. Um, there's been some really good trades. You just, you've had to be there for right now. Kind of tough going counter trend despite, you know, this huge move down. You know, a little sour there. We did talk about not to panic, so I'm glad we said that. We even gave that Aaron Rodgers, don't panic, uh, stay calm, and that was really the, the answer. So there it is, man, just like that, right up to the upside. Basically, off of that talk, we're up about 200 handles. So now you're starting to fade back in about 180, 170 or so from that bottom of, well, actually, the bottom's only 1840, so we're at 18180. Yeah, so 140 handles right now from that bottom. Could definitely fade it back in. That's why we tried to get um, NVIDIA short, but we did miss that uh, trade. And the reason why we looked, ah, rats. You know where we're sitting? Uh, 874.50. That got as high as 874.25. So 50 cents away from five bucks. But that's the way it works sometimes. Um, Uber's making the move down, which is really, for me, uh, all that matters right now. This is my newest position. It's Uber making more lows. We'll go four for five, hit the like. Uh, just trying to get, I just got into Roblox, but I just also missed arm on that curl. So I don't want to, I don't want to get down too far to chase it. I'll wait for the 27s. And then a similar thing going on here with Rivian. Rivian did double top that 1035. Now you're trying to make a lower high. I'm going to wet the beak here in the mid 20s to the south side into that potential $10 level break. So it would be a different trade. Like it'd be short here into 1035 top and then get out in front of 10 even. If 10 breaks, that would be its own trade. We talked about Roblox in that $40 level, so I wanted to be, Roblox on the New York, uh, I wanted to be into it back into 40. I understand, obviously, you're gonna have this level here, 39.40 is support, 
but the reason I like the trade had more to do with hit enter again. Oh, come on. Uh, hit enter twice. There you go. It was a 50 period is at that $40 level. I just liked that one. It didn't really do much of a, a hold at the open, but that's where I wanted to support it. So if it can't hang on to this, I'm going to give it a few cents underneath so I don't have a 99 stop, but not too much. We're going to risk about 20 cents on that trade. Uh, NVIDIA, oh, it's at 69 now, so I guess it did not get to 875 yet. So there's still a chance. I mean, if NVIDIA makes one more push higher, I could still get that arm fill if the chips can hold on for a little bit more strength to get me that short. But the Rivian should be the new position that we're able to get here in the 20s, giving it to that high. Oh, yeah, Tesla. We haven't really looked too much at Tesla. Still in the no-fly zone for me on Tesla. You're not breaking down underneath 171. You're not breaking out above 174 and a half. So uh, I guess we're still sticking to our guns and not trading Tesla until it breaks away uh, from this inside range. Yeah, 1048. Put some... Um Yo, what's up, Derek Thompson? Sorry about that, but congratulations. You're getting married on Friday. All right, it's not too late. What day is it right now? It's Wednesday. Uh, no, congratulations. Uh, big one there for you. Um, you know, that's it. It's a green day today. Is it a green day on Friday? We'll see. No matter what for you, it will be a celebratory one. So congratulations right there. Oh, my God, you're getting married. Oh it is Derek Thompson. Congrats. Um, all righty then, um, that's it. If there's any symbols, Mr. Derek Thompson, you want me to look at for your birthday, I will do that for sure. So let me know if there's anything that's in there right now. Um, you know, we'll, we'll keep everything where it is, man. The trophy will stay here today. There's 10 minutes left. We'll wait to see what does wind up happening uh, back in on the day. 50 cents in the money on Alibaba, looking for more. And again, the newest trade idea uh, coming through is Uber. 35 cents right now in the money on Uber. Honestly, looking for it. Um, Tesla, Neil just looked at Tesla, so I'll do something else. Yeah, congrats. There it is. Thanks, guys. No, you're welcome, Derek. Uh, again, good. Good for you there. Um, you make that move and, and, and go for it. So 224 right there coming in um, for SMH. So just definitely watch out for that level. That would be a short for me. Maybe against the 50 period as well. 223, 27. I actually kind of like this play as well. So um, yeah, getting married, it's not too late. That was pretty funny, eh, Brad? Um, yeah, it's all good. All right, uh, let's go over, and then we only have 10 minutes left in this show. Then the midday show is topic... Range trading. range trading. So trading strategies while range trading. And then, of course, the professor throws in the word advanced. Advanced. Trading strategies. So uh, get ready for that and level up your game during the midday show. Get that education on point. What's up, Adara? So I hear trying to break up above this previous area of resistance above 105 is getting a nice move up on that hotter, hotter than expected here. CPI data, 0.1% uh, here to the upside for all these numbers. So CPI month over month, 0.4 versus 0.3 expected year over year, 3.5 versus 3.4 expected. Core CPI month over month, 0.4 versus 0.3 expected. And core CPI year over year, 3.8 versus 3.7 expected. So all of these going to be about 0.1 higher than expected here. We also had wholesale inventories month over month. Those came in uh, flat compared to expectations. So 0.5 for February versus 0.5 expected. Also worth noting, we did have uh, Fed's Bowman speaking at 845 did not say anything with regards to monetary policy. But we have Fed's goals we to keep an eye on here coming up at 12. 45. We also have PPI tomorrow morning, which could be impacting the DXY. And it is worth noting as well, here's the CAD to USD chart. So Canadian dollar taking a big hit here compared to the DXY. Well, we had that harder than expected CPI number. We had the Canadian rates coming in flat, but the Canadian um, Bank of Canada Governor Macklem saying that there is a possibility for rate cuts in June. So a little bit of dovish sentiment sending the CAD to the downside compared to the DXY, guys. That's good for Canada. Well, everyone around here, like it's, uh, let's just say there's uh, some pressure. I mean, there's pressure on lots of governments to have rates lower, I think, for, you know, for mortgage rate purposes. And uh, if you think you're getting it in the United States on the government, you're definitely getting it here in Canada. I, like, I just got XOM, but I wanted to go first to the oil futures chart because we did have inventories at 1030. And we held, well, we, we I'm not trading oil futures, 885 just held. So you came into support. 
It was able to hold on. XOM did make that breakout. I did miss the dip buy this morning on XOM at that 120. 120 ish level. I mean, I was sitting at 128, like in a half underneath here. Uh, didn't really get that fill, unfortunately. But I did buy the dip back into previous support, which also happens to be VWAP. So, on a trend to the upside, we're looking for that dip and then go. So, bounce off of VWAP here. I just grabbed 85. It just cracked to 30 cents in the money, which is, I mean, I guess that's better than one to one because I'd be giving it to 70. That's a 65 down here. And then if you can get to the high of the day, great. So the good news is you just saw Oil Futures trying to bounce off the lows, and XOM is actually holding the highs. So that's great uh, for XOM. Can it hold on is going to be the big question. Uh, Roblox, bit, uh, Brad, I did mention I'm in it, but this is not... I keep typing NASDAQ for... I don't even know why I keep thinking Roblox and the NASDAQ. But I only gave it to 39.9. Uh, 39.90, I should say, not 09s. So it actually just came out, as you were mentioning. But I did like the dip buy into 40. I just didn't want to give it a wide berth all the way to the low. Not necessarily a time of day thing. There was no, the significance of the level was the 50 period moving average. So really, there was no support that formed. So giving it a wider range doesn't make sense. If it pulls all the way back into yesterday's highs, I think that's a reasonable trade to look back if you want to strengthen Roblox. But I'm out of it. Uh, Oscar is mentioning that Boeing is at the day's low. Is it, are they even, can they even have a strong day these days? Like, seriously? Oh, Boeing gave up 175. Uh-oh. Uh, so Boeing is now within $1 of, I guess, the Alamo. I said I called it the Alamo yesterday. Uh, so that March bottom, uh, 173 on Boeing. Uh, that could get tested. If this market, if this market continues down, I, I think Boeing is going to break this. Uh, look for that 173. I might take a flat bottom break there. Uh, new position right here. I'm going to get that super chat in a second. Shout out to Donnie Zimbabwe. Uh, we put on, I mean, we're already made back 25% of what we've lost on SMH just with this one trade. We talked about getting it. We should have put it back on. It's now 30 cents in the money for SMH and starting to go down. I feel already, I mean, I feel fine, but we already nailed this AMD trade and look where we got out. Like talk about an absolute destruction there for AMD to the downside. And again, Absolutely. So we're getting, you know, we're getting excited uh, here. All right, let's go over to SMH and just see where we could get the bottom. So we just went there. I was at 222, basically flat. We just touched down there to 30. So let's put another bid there. Again, just because it's following NVIDIA and stuff, it's like, uh, uh, do I really want to mess too much with it? Do we just get that, Phil? Oh, damn. Okay. Uh, here we go. So we are starting to make that money back on SMH. There it is right there. I mean, some, sometimes we try all day for 50 cents, and sometimes it comes in less than one minute. So right there, 50 cents, and then that gets Travolta wondering what's up with that. So nice move to the downside there for SMH. Um, and this is another example, Alibaba, like, just chilling out. Like, you know, we're waiting for this trade to do something. Meanwhile, we just flip over. And this is the thing. We got this yesterday from Anthony Kerr and somebody else. They were just saying, have the ability... And because we did this yesterday, we lost on Apple, then we went over to the TQQs and then did a little bit of this with it, uh, gave it a couple of slaps back and forth. Uh, but the idea behind that trade last night was switching gears. So I feel like that's ultimately what you're going to try to do here when you see plays like this. So, um, you know, get into something, understand where the weakness um, or the uh, strength is and try to play off of that. So we missed. We were there for NVIDIA. We missed NVIDIA by 25 cents, which would have been a $10 winner. So we did miss that one. So uh, again, we don't have to get them all. We should have had that. We did have AMD, but I can't complain with it. We put those numbers on the board um, with only 10.56. And here's up, what's up to Donnie Zimbabwe. We said we would talk about this, so let's do it right now. Thank you for resubscribing, man. That means a lot. Uh, five bucks a month just for, for the subscription. We get some new chairs around here uh, and some new milk jugs. Uh, so uh, we hit the money. Thank you so much. NVIDIA longs were mint. So congratulations, Mr. Zimbabwe. Uh, I love that name. And I just hope that your longs continue to print despite me being short on SMH. So um, congratulations, Mr. Zimbabwe. And I will see everybody again soon, but not until 2 o'clock. The best thing about trading is both things can be true. Like if you're long and you're like, you could have a swing trade, you could have a different horizon, like you could easily love that, but you could, there could be a $10 move down in Nvidia and then it breaks $25 higher and the short wins and the long wins. It's just a matter of, you know, what, what's your entry, um, what's your reason for getting out or 
or also your reason for taking profit. Because truthfully, NVIDIA was a monster long, but twice it's given you, whether it's five or $10 rich pullbacks, in an upward trend. And the market is going to do that. So you, you've got to have your own plan of action uh, when it comes to that. I, I'm going to move my stop on Tilray and then explain to you why uh, here. So Tilray, it's bounced off of, it's just bouncing here off of VWAP. So if it can retest, retake those highs, I'll still get some out, maybe one leg in front of the top and then wait for the next one to get all out in front of 225. But if this cannot hold on to VWAP, I'm out. I'm not giving this to $2 anymore. Uh, the SSR bounce already happened. There's no new trade for me. This either holds on to VWAP and gives me the top, or it breaks VWAP and I just get out of it. Uh, I did not, I missed that arm reload, but it's still somewhat in the pocket for a chance to get refilled up here at 127. So you're gonna be patient. If we get it, we get it. Uh, otherwise, do not have to be forced into a trade. And then the last one that we're in right now, XOM, uh, just sort of chilling after bouncing off the up. It's at 122. Uh, Gooby saying, can you, you want me to check the 30 year bond? I don't know, I have, the, I have the 10 up on, I mean, I suppose I could. Uh, let's just go US 30. Da -da -da -da. Where are you, where are you, where are you, where are you? Eh, whatever, this will be good enough. Uh, where's that going? So the downside, I guess that'll be the actual bond, so the rates must be still going up. I like looking at the 10 much better. I I find, the, I find the 10 year treasury as a trader is usually the one uh, that you wanna be following. And you can see rates are actually holding up at that four five, pretty much exactly where we were when that hot print came out. So not a lot has changed. Uh, though the market did make a bit of a bounce, it's worth mentioning here, if you look at the NASDAQ, it's about to, like it looks like it's giving it back up. And so we did not break out through that previous resistance level. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we couldn't take out those levels. That's why I wanted that reload in arm. Uh, all right, guys, we are almost done. Z Donnie Zimbabwe, yeah, Neil just talked a little bit about there with uh, NVIDIA. A big congratulations again to Joseph and Josh uh, for getting on that um, uh, on the podium as well. Good afternoon. Good morning so far. We'll see if we can get an even better afternoon. We just did take it out right there. We'll props up for Uber. We are now out of Uber uh, as we go. And Mr. Zimbabwe, look, I'll do it quickly for you because we do got to go over to the midday. You can ask questions on the midday too, uh, to get these guys going. Look, I think VWAP, I always think that, I think NVIDIA maybe is going to the downside. I am biased though, Mr. Zimbabwe, because uh, I'm short right now the SMH, and we nailed that um, AMD trade to the wall, basically, like, honestly, like, what else, what else? Um, but that one right here, I like the SMH, and if we're gonna talk about NVIDIA, uh, right there for a long, I would say you wait for these kind of pullbacks. Right now, it just happened, 862 was a nice little bottom there, 860 into VWAP again. So there it is, man, thank you so much. Um, if you like the market today, congratulations. Um, there's always money to be made or lost, and uh, that's what we're here to do is entertain, show you guys some opportunities, um, and uh, you know, and share some amusement with you guys. And happy International Pink Day. Exactly. And get some advanced yes. range trading. Not just range trading. I got to pay attention to this. Advanced I need some advanced strategies range here. Range trading knowledge with Learn to Trade. You've got the professor and Adara. That's how you want to start the show. Getting trolled by the big kahunas. Hi. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade formerly known as the Midday Show. That lovely lady right there in the baby blue is your girl, Adara. I am Sharif, and we're gonna wait for everyone to migrate on over from the other stream. We already have a couple of early birds. We got Big Kevin Mendoza. What's up, my friend? We got the OG Darwin. We got Bears versus Bulls gracing us with this presence there in the chat. We're gonna wait for everyone to come on over, taking a little bit longer today. Um, we even have Adara in the chat, believe it or not. Um, I've been keeping my eye on the future as well as